Miller just into the game. 16 for Earl. Years later, a Puritan water conditioning unit. It's true, Puritan water conditioners are built to last and last and last. Puritan's success can be attributed to making the best in water conditioning equipment, selecting the proper unit for your individual needs, and keeping their customers happy with prompt, reliable service. Invest in a Puritan water conditioner today. Phone 362-6340 for a free water analysis, or stop in at 216 Lafayette Avenue in Crawfordsville. Take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, a basketball team that has had tremendous success at Williams Arena, where they play their home ball games at 13-1 and on the year. It's a ball club that uh, I know you mentioned in our first meeting with them was the second best team in the conference as far as their physical uh, abilities were concerned. Uh, what kind of basketball team uh, do you foresee them as being today? Well, they'll be a very good team today, Don. They're a strange team because uh, they play, uh, they're two different teams. They play a lot better at home than they play on the road. I thought they played pretty well against us uh, in Bloomington. Um, yet I think they still uh, made some mistakes in that game that enabled us to get back in it and win the ball game. Uh, at home, uh, for whatever the reason, they're just a, a different team. Uh, they start out with most of the ingredients necessary uh, to be a really good basketball team. Um, they may not have the kind of outside shooting on the front line that you might like to have. They don't have somebody that can shoot the ball like Evans as an example. Um, but they make up for that with depth and size and strength and can really beat you on the boards and can and can post a lot and can get to the free throw line a lot. And we're going to have to be uh, very alert to that. Their outside shooting comes basically from McDonald and from Leonard and both of them are very good outside shooters. So as they play the perimeter uh, they're shooting uh, it helps a great deal with their post play because you've got to go out with both uh, both of them. Um, it's a, a big team. Uh, McDonald is, I don't know, listed at 6'2", maybe. Um, but he's a big kid. He's a very strong kid, uh, uh, big arms, uh, uh, pretty big body kid. And, and Leonard is a bigger body kid uh, yet. So uh, they have, uh, and it's not a slow team. I mean, it's a good physical team. I, I would have uh, felt uh, that uh, that Minnesota would have been able to beat Michigan here. Uh, and uh, Michigan really uh, was not in uh, any uh, danger of losing that ball game in the last five minutes, which it was kind of surprising uh, to me because of what I think the, the kind of personnel they have is. We're going to have to to be able offensively to spread the floor, to be able to drive. Uh, I think we have a little advantage uh, in quickness. We're going to have to uh, to take advantage of that. We're going to, uh, starting with today, we're going to be playing Pat Graham a lot. Uh, he's here. We're going to use him. I think I probably made a mistake in the game in Columbus and not using him a lot more than I did. There's an intensity about Pat's play. Uh, there's a, 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 an interest in in uh, in, in Pat as far as practice is concerned. I'm not sure that I've ever been around a kid that just genuinely enjoys playing basketball more than Pat Graham does. And consequently, uh, I think that's the kind of uh, shot maybe that, um, that this team needs. I, I think we need somebody that has that kind of enthusiasm and shows that kind of enthusiasm uh, playing. And, and uh, Pat is going to just play uh, from here on for us. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts right after the 60-second timeout. The football players, the fans, and certainly the coaches expect IU to have a winning season. It takes 100% effort from everyone to make the season successful. Varsity Club members support this winning effort by their generous gifts to the scholarship fund for the football team and 17 other varsity sports. The athletic department receives no tax dollars to support the program. We pay the bills through the generosity of our fans. Help the Varsity Club have a winning season with your gift. With your 100% effort, along with the hard work of our players and coaches, how can we lose? University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. 
University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening. Bob, uh, just a, a note about that first contest as far as the tempo of that game was played. It was played much as a half-court ball game. Was that to Minnesota's advantage, or uh, would you prefer to play that way, or, or what's your thought on that area? I wouldn't, mi <clears throat> I wouldn't mind Don at all uh, playing this game up here uh, at a half-court tempo, but I don't think that'll be the case. I think this game will be played at a faster tempo. We'll just see how the tempo goes and whether we can play at the tempo. I think Minnesota will try to play at a very fast tempo. I think they'll try and get the ball down the floor and try and get it in the post just as quick as they can. Lineup wise today, Coach? We'll go with um, uh, Pat and Greg Graham at the guards and uh, Evans, uh, Nover, and Cheney inside. Coach, best of luck in today's ball game. This has been the Bob Knight pregame show with discussion and commentary on today's game with Minnesota. Now this is Don Fisher inviting you to stay tuned for today's game. Horner's annual February tax sale is now in progress. Rebates up to $2,000 on GM and Chrysler models. Lowest interest rates in years. Rates as low as 4.9% on some models. The selection of new Buicks, Pontiacs, and Chrysler products has never been better. They really believe now is the best time of the year to buy. Over 200 new cars, trucks, vans, Jeeps, and used cars to choose from. All at February tax sale deals. Stop in today for the best deals of the year at Horner, Pontiac, Buick, and Chrysler, downtown Crawfordsville. See the grain drill built for all field conditions, no-till included. The John Deere 750, now at Jackson Lee Pearson in Frankfurt. Use the 750 drill for any conservation seating or any conventional seating. Excellent accuracy and depth control. It's available in 10 or 15 foot working widths or 30 feet with a two unit hitch. See the John Deere 750 drill today at Jackson Lee Pearson on State Road 28 in Frankfurt. We're working hard to earn your business. More and more people are coming to enjoy the delicious steaks, chops, and seafood dinners available at Zock's Family Restaurant. Now Jim Zock has made a change to his taste-tempting T-bone steak dinners. Now you can have your choice of 12-ounce or big 20-ounce T-bone steaks. The 12-ounce T-bone dinner with your choice of potatoes, salad, and rolls is just $9.99, and the full 20-ounce T-bone dinner is $13.95. Stop in soon and enjoy a delicious T-bone steak dinner at Zock's Family Restaurant, Highway 231, South Edge of Crawfordsville. Enjoy home-cooked food in generous portions any time, any day of the week at the Duck Inn Diner. From breakfast with a bottomless coffee cup to sandwiches, a full dinner, or just a cup of coffee with a slice of one of Jenny's homemade pies, you won't spend a lot of money at the Duck Inn Diner. On US 52 at State Road 28, open 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. So make the day special, make it fabulous. Do yourself a flavor, come dine with us. You're listening to 1550 AM WCVL and 103.9 FM WIMC Crawfordsville. means it's time for a good hot meal from Zox Family Restaurant in Crawfordsville. Stop in for dinner, lunch, or breakfast, and you'll have a full menu of food favorites to choose from. Breakfast items are available all day. There's a daily lunch special every weekday, and for dinner, choose from Zox's selection of steaks, chops, seafood, chicken, or sandwich platters. Stop in soon and enjoy a delicious meal at Zox Family Restaurant, Highway 231, South Edge of Crawfordsville. For efficiency, comfort, and a cleaner environment, natural gas is your best energy value season after season. By your local Napa Auto Parts store, Napa because there are no unimportant parts. By your local Na uh, Amico Soda Care Repair Centers. By the Hoosier Lottery, where you've got to play to win. By State Farm Insurance and the more than 500 State Farm agents throughout Indiana. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By the real estate professionals of the 121 Century 21 offices in Indiana. By True Value Hardware. Got a tough job? You can do it with True Value Hardware stores. By Tricept Herbicide, PPI weed control that puts you in control. And by Indiana's rural electric cooperatives, consumer-owned for service excellence. Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Fisher along with Max Skirving. This afternoon, Bob Knight's Hoosiers attempt to begin a new winning streak, meeting the tough Golden Gophers of Minnesota. 
ranked number one of the country. IU fell for the first time in Big Ten play on Tuesday at Ohio State, 81 to 77 in overtime. The defeat left Indiana's record at 24 and three, and their Big Ten mark at 13 and one, which is good for a two-game lead in the loss column with four games to play over their nearest competitors. Minnesota stands 15 and eight on the year, seven and seven in the conference mark, but are 13 and one at home, falling only to Michigan. Max Gerben, the Gophers, have gave Indiana fits before succumbing 61 to 57 in Bloomington, and they are always primed here in Minneapolis when IU comes to town. Don, even when they haven't had records of 13 and one at home as they have today, they have always been a tough team for Indiana to handle. The crowd really gets into it up here. They look forward to Indiana coming, and I think they've got a special mission today. And of course, that special mission is to knock off Indiana. They've been talking about it up here in the papers like it's the game of the century. They have indeed. Of course, they think they might have had that game taken away, although the coaches and players have not said that. Everybody knows about the governor of Minnesota writing the Big Ten office, so they feel this game is one they've got to have. Well, the all-time series is dominated by Indiana with a 79-48 to Hoosier advantage, and IU has won four of the last five meetings. But last year, the Gophers won here 71-67. to It was what considered to be one of the major upsets of the college basketball season. We'll be back to talk more about today's game in a moment, but first, let's pause for the 60-second network timeout. This is the sound of the most dreaded vehicle on the road today, the tow truck. Because when you hear it, you know it's going to cost you. So don't cut corners. Get the best parts money can buy. Napa. Parts built to meet or exceed original standards. And avoid the tow truck. Napa because there are no unimportant parts. To get ahead, you've got to think big. Your local Century 21 office is part of the largest real estate sales organization in the world. That means you'll have access to more buyers and sellers than the competition, along with the best training and the largest referral system in the industry. Plus, their wide range of real estate products and services can give you a real advantage. They have career opportunities just waiting for you. Contact your local Century 21 office today or call 1-800-886-4849. With the Century 21 system, it's as good as done. Each office independently owned and operated. Well, back once again at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. You're listening to 1550 AM WCBL and 103.9 FM WIMC Crawfordsville. Well, Max, as these two ball clubs get set for today's ball game, injuries playing a part in both teams right now. Alan Henderson, of course, has been out now. This will be the third ball game for IU. And for Minnesota, they've got one player, Townsend Orr, that is definitely out of today's ball game. Jason Walton, one of their starting forwards, who played well in the first meeting between these two clubs, uh, is scheduled as probable for today, but apparently will not start the ball game because he has an ankle injury. And uh, how much he'll be able to play and his effectiveness in that vein will have to be waited to be seen. Well, they've had problems all year long. They've had one, two, three, four, five, six players that have been hurt at some point. And so as a result, their season record probably reflects that. Certainly both Orr and Walton are a couple of ball players who mean very much to this Minnesota team. And Orr's uh, missing today. He got seven points in the game against Indiana early on. Walton had 14. So they would be missed, but certainly no more so than, than Henderson will be for Indiana. The first ball game, of course, as we indicated in our pregame with Coach Knight, was a half-court ball game. Bob said that he would like to see that same kind of a game here at Williams Arena. He predicts, however, that, that Minnesota will change their game plan and try to have it into a transition ball game today. Well, I would interpret what he said, and it's strictly my interpretation. He thinks they'll try to take advantage of the fact that Alan Henderson is not in there to cause any problems in the middle, and that perhaps Indiana's a little bit more vulnerable now underneath without him, and using their players to a better degree that punching it inside might be their best advantage. Well, one of the things that Minnesota is so good at, it would appear, Max, is getting inside, because they have used their inside players more so than their perimeter game this year. They have, and they're very good at that, and they have done a good job on that. Although I would suggest, Don, that I thought in that game in Bloomington, it was their defense that maybe caused Indiana as many problems as anything else. And if they play that tough a defense today, the Hoosiers have again got a tough game ahead of them. 
Bob Knight has taken the opportunity to change lineups once again, and he's going to go with Pat Graham today, starting for the first time this season. He didn't even start in the first three ball games of the campaign when he was healthy before he broke his foot in the preseason NIT. As a matter of fact, he's played very little in those first two games. I think he played seven minutes maybe in the first game and maybe not even that much in the Ohio State game on Tuesday. So I, uh, I am a little surprised. I thought they'd be phasing him in a bit more, but I understand he went a good 40 minutes in practice uh, Thursday night and played very well, shot very well. So this may have just made uh, Coach Knight think now's the time to go. And he's also going to start Brian Evans today, and I believe that's Brian's first start of the season. I believe it is. Now that I think back on it, I think it is his first. Obviously, he feels he needs some rebounding, and of course, uh, with Graham and uh, Evans in there, he's got a little more size than he might have if he were to start uh, either Reynolds or at Damon Bailey. Well, one of the big detriments for this Indiana ball club is the physical size of Minnesota. As far as Indiana is concerned, the Hoosiers do not match up with this ball club very well as far as physical uh, uh, size is concerned. And I'm not just talking height now. I'm talking about bulk. You're absolutely right about that. You've got Randy Carter comes in at 235, Colander at 225. Both of these guys, Leonard the guard is at 200 pounds. Indiana just does not have much to match that. They've gotten over at 230, but uh, they do have good beefy size. They're stocky type people, and they can throw their weight around there. They're good uh, in that regard. One of the things that Indiana has got to get back to is good play from Calvert Chaney. He's had two subpar ball games in his last two outings. He has indeed, Don, and of course there's lots of speculation as to why. We talked about it a little bit coming from the airport today with some of the people who are in the cab with us. The fact that uh, the Big Ten record that he's obviously going to break sooner or later, player of the year, and all this kind of talk maybe is affecting him. Well, we'll be back to talk more about this ball game and look at the starting lineups as well. But first, let's pause for the 60-second timeout. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. Some home equity credit makes people uneasy, but not Equity Reserve at National City Bank. Equity Reserve is a no-nonsense, variable-rate credit line for fiscally responsible people who use common sense and good judgment. Right now at National City Bank, you can receive 8.25 APR and no closing cost. Appraisal fee may be assessed. So stop by a nearby National City Banking office to apply for your Equity Reserve credit line. Then relax. National City Bank, going the distance for you at all Montgomery County locations and equal housing lender. Do you have water spots on your dishes and glassware? Are your clothes dull and dingy after laundering? Does your skin feel dry and rough? If so, you need a Puritan water conditioning unit. Puritan soft water turns clothes whiter and makes dishes sparkle. Puritan soft water keeps your skin smooth and your hair shining. Puritan has over 40 models to choose from. Puritan Water Conditioning, 216 Lafayette Avenue, Crawfordsville. Phone 362-6340. Puritan, another name for soft water. our national anthem in the background as this Indiana basketball team as uh, still in the locker room getting ready for this ball game tonight uh, we had some phone problems earlier Max I guess the phone man is here right now trying to tell us whether it's working or not huh? he's conversing with me I'm sorry I'm not sure what you're saying over here right now yeah he's trying to solve it for us well uh, one of the things I think we must point out about today's ball game is how important it is from the Big Ten standings department Indiana right now holds a two-game lead in the loss column over everybody else in the conference. However, if Indiana gets beat today, Michigan and Illinois are still in the hunt for this Big Ten championship. Boy, are they ever, Don. Then it comes down to the fact that Indiana would have to win all three games, assuming that neither of those teams lost, although we know one of them is going to lose because Michigan and Illinois play each other. So one of the two will lose. But it certainly is conceivable the team that wins that game will go undefeated the rest of the way. So as a result, this game is just absolutely uh, the most important thing Indiana has uh, so far because should they lose today, then they go into the final three games needing to win all three under the uh, 
thought that the Michigan or Illinois will not lose anymore. Would need to win all three in order to be Big Ten champions. And certainly, Indiana with uh, the great record it had just prior to Henderson going down as a uh, with physical problems uh, certainly has changed this around. Matt, uh, Max, one of the other things I think today that uh, is interesting, Williams Arena is being renovated. It certainly is, Don. It's uh, very, very uh, different in here right now. They've got huge heat pipes already in this place, and they must have them going pretty good because I'm warm. I might tell the people back in Indiana, Minnesota has less snow and a higher temperature than when I left Bloomington this morning. But at any rate, Williams Arena is being redone. They have built a big new lobby on the south end, which was an end that really was not even uh, noticed by uh, most people that came to Williams Arena. And next year at this time, they will have uh, chair seats in this place. I guess they're going to lose some seating out of it, but it's going to be a much nicer place. Well, they've been able to put, what, over 18,000 fans in here for a number of years, and this is about the only ball game I think you're in and you're out that they sell out. So uh, taking a few seats out probably won't hurt them that much. I would think it would not make that big a difference to them uh, on the season all year long. Uh, like you say, uh, maybe a game here or there it might make a difference. Well, the Hoosiers are coming back out of the floor right now prior to today's ball game getting underway. And you can tell in the background as the Gopher fans go crazy that the Gophers are well on their way out to the floor also. This is one of the more unique facilities in the Big Ten, that you, uh, especially for the coaches and the players down there on the sidelines. The uh, seats are all below the actual playing floor. It makes it very tough to see the ball game from that location. I don't know whether this is a fact, but I was told that they were going to keep the floor up where it is now, which is very surprising to me. I can't imagine why they don't take it back down the low or to the ground level where all the seats are. The other thing, Don, this board we work off of here, I see someone at Carver in 1949. We come back here next year. This won't be here. I, I feel like I want to take part of this with me. <laughs> well, we want to pay a special welcome today to the Armed Forces Radio Network, who is joining us with their over 400 stations on land and on sea throughout the world. We're most happy to have our Armed Forces listening to today's broadcast. We hope you enjoy it between Indiana and Minnesota out of the Big Ten. A uh, capacity crowd of well over 17,000 is on hand here this afternoon. We'll get the official attendance hopefully before this ball game ends. We're expecting a Donnybrook. As we indicated, Minnesota felt like they had one taken from them when they came to Bloomington back about a month ago. And uh, they have been pointing for this ball game ever since. Last year, Indiana just throttled the uh, Gophers down in Bloomington by 48 points, only to come back up here and get beat by four. So it was a tremendous turnaround this year. It was a four-point ball game in Bloomington. You think the Hoosiers can turn around and get a 48-point victory up here, Max? I don't think so, but I'll <laughs> settle for a one- or two-point win. I, I don't, I'm not sure my heart will take it, but I'll take it uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that this ball club is just hopeful that they can come out of here with a win today. And there is no doubt that this uh, will be a very, very difficult place to play. I'm not so sure that Minnesota hasn't become one of the toughest places to play in the Big Ten, especially for Indiana, but everybody in the conference has problems here. Well, there was a period of time there when Indiana had some success, but I go back a long way before you came around, Don, when Branch McCracken was coaching. He didn't win up here very often. I mean, I can remember coming up here and not winning in Minnesota a great number of years. Well, you know, Knight's record here in Minneapolis is 13-8, and eight, so he has had some success, to say the least, and Indiana has won four of the last five meetings between these two clubs, but you always know it's going to be a battle when you get on the floor here at Williams Arena. Well, let's look now at the starting lineups for today's ball game. First of all, for the Golden Gophers, they will go with Ariel McDonald at one guard. He is 6'2", 170, a junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, a 10.6 scoring average. So Sean Leonard at 6'4", 200 pounds of sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, is at the other guard. He is seven, averaging 17.2 a ball game. In the middle, Chad Colander. Colander is 6'9", 225. He's a sophomore from Owatonna, Minnesota. He averages seven points a ball game. And the forward spots today will be manned by Randy Carter at 6'8", 235. He's a junior from Memphis, Tennessee, averaging 11.9 points a game. And Nate Tubbs at 6'4", 210 pounds, a senior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. He is averaging 4.1 a contest. So that's the way the Gophers will start this afternoon. For Indiana, at the forward spot will be Calvert Chaney at 6'6", 204, a senior out of Evansville, a 21.9 scoring average. And 
Brian Evans at 6'8", 2'11", a freshman out of Terre Haute, Indiana, a 5.8 scoring average at the other forward spot, his first start of the year. In the middle, Matt Nover at 6'8", 230, a senior from Chesterton, Indiana, a 10'5 scoring mark. And the guards today will be Greg Graham at 6'5", 204, a senior out of Indianapolis, a 15.1 scoring average in the season. And he's also starting Pat Graham for the first time this year. Pat gets a start, 6'5", 204, a junior out of Floyd Knobs, Indiana, a 5.6 scoring average. And again, Graham hurt all of this season with the exception of the first three ball games and the last two with a broken foot. So he is back today, starting for the first time on the campaign. We'll be back with a tip-off after we pause for the 60-second network timeout. In the Hoosier State. State Farm is there with three discounts for Indiana homeowners. If your house is just a few years old, you get a new home discount. Install a smoke alarm, a fire extinguisher, and deadbolt locks, you get a home alert discount. When you're with State Farm three years, you get an automatic discount. A State Farm agent is there to help you save on your homeowner's insurance. State Farm is there. Hi, this is Woodard Scott for True Value. We'd like to wish the Indiana University basketball team, better known as the Hoosiers, a great season. When your opponents put the full court press on you, your team needs a point guard who can cut through the defense. But for cutting through wood, you need the Master Mechanic 7 and a quarter inch circular saw for just $39.99. It offers built-in scales and cutting guides for precision cuts. For personal service and low prices, bring your family to the True Value family of stores. This broadcast is authorized under rights granted by Indiana University to University Broadcasting Company and the IU Radio Network. Any rebroadcast of the other descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of University Broadcasting and the IU Radio Network is prohibited. Clem Haskins, the head coach of Minnesota, and now in his seventh season. And his record here in Minnesota is 104-98. The Hoosiers' Bob Knight, of course, is in his 22nd year at IU. His record at Indiana is 5-10 and 163. And we are ready. The officials for today's ball game are Phil Boba, along with Randy Drury and Tom Clark. And this crowd is roaring here at the outset already. And we're ready to go. Jumping it for IU will be Calvert Cheney. Jumping for Minnesota is Chad Colander. And here's the toss, and it is controlled by Minnesota. McDonald in backcourt to Vashon Leonard, who goes right side to Randy Carter. Carter holds, directs some traffic out there. Now fires it off to Leonard, who goes left to McDonald, who goes left to Nate Tubbs on the baseline. Back outside to McDonald, right side to Leonard. Leonard flips it off to Colander, top of the key. Goes left to McDonald for a three try, and he bangs it home. Ariel McDonald hits the first points of this ball game, and it's a 3 0 Minnesota lead. Across the timeline for IU is Greg Graham to Pat Graham. Graham on the left wing. Pat brings it out top of the key, gives it to Calvert Cheney. Cheney drives it baseline, pulls up, fires, and missed the shot. Rebounds batter out. Nate Tubbs has it. Off to Vashon Leonard. Leonard on the left wing, holds, gives it outside to Carter. Randy Carter goes to Colander. He looks down low, then dribbles it to the baseline. Having some trouble, finally clears it inside to Tubbs. He lost the ball. Brian Evans had it. It goes out of bounds. It'll belong to Minnesota, and the Hoosiers are really upset about that call. There wasn't anybody on the bench that said that that ball was off of Indiana. But the official says yes. Leonard gets it in to Colander on the baseline, and Colander circles it back out against Bryant Evans. Now he gives it off to Vashon Leonard. Leonard holds up two fingers in backcourt. Now the pass comes off to Carter. He turns in the lane, jump shot is up and in. Randy Carter scores. And Minnesota jumps to a 5 nothing lead over IU. Now Greg Graham will bring it down the floor. Graham across the timeline, top of the key. Greg holds. Starts at left side. Gives to Pat Graham, who flies a three-pointer of his own, and he bangs it home. Pat Graham with a three for IU. It's a 5-3 ball game. And the Hoosiers' first points on the board today are from three-point range. Now McDonald, top of the key to Colander. Colander gives it to Leonard, who pumps it up from 19 feet. It's short off the rim. The rebound battle for it. Carter puts it back up, and he got it. Randy Carter gets his second basket, his fourth point. 
Here's Greg Graham the other way. Drives, pulls up, and we got a blocking foul against Minnesota's Randy Carter. And as has been the case all year long, there hasn't been a single call made on the opposing team when they're playing at home that doesn't get booed. And Carter's got his first foul of the ball game. So Indiana will go to the free throw line as Greg Graham goes to the stripe. Two shots coming, and Clem Haskins is really upset about that. And he takes his coat off and slams it down. The officials never saw it. Graham drills the free one, and the Hoosiers have their first point from Greg Graham tonight. He'll have one more. Clem Haskins took the coat off and slammed it to the floor. The officials never saw it as Graham misses that one. Miron Nover puts it up in there. Matt Nover with a rebound basket off the missed free throw. 7-6 score. IU down one. Minnesota ball. Randy Carter and a whistle away from the ball. Push off on the Gophers. And it's on Ariel McDonald. That'll be his first foul of the ball game, and that'll be team foul two against Minnesota. Clem Haskins is out on the floor again. And screaming to Phil Bobo about it. Indiana ball. <laughs> Graham inbounds to Greg Graham. Greg in backcourt. Slides it right side and threw it away. Tried to hit Pat Graham with a pass, and Bashan Leonard was there. Leonard, right side to Carter, who drives against Nover. Pulls up, looks outside, flashes the ball to Nate Tubbs. Tubbs drives it left in the wing. He pulls up, then fires, and hits. And Nate Tubbs has got his first two of the ball game. 9-6, Minnesota by three. Pat Graham on the dribble, right side, gives it to Calvert. Calvert down low, has it battered away. Greg Graham gets sidelined, and the ball goes out of bounds to Minnesota. Greg Graham got hit and went down. And Clem Haskins is still screaming at one of the officials. Here on the drive is Leonard, who pulls up, fires, and missed it. Rebound inside, lost out of bounds, and it belonged to IU. You ever hear so much positioning from a crowd, Max? Well, they're trying to get it ready. Just like it has been almost every place Indiana's gone. Here's Brian Evans to cover Chaney to Pat Graham. Down inside, pass deflected away to Nover. He lost it out of bounds. Minnesota has it. So the Hoosiers have turned it over three times now, and the Gophers will have the basketball. 9-6 score. Indiana is a three-point trailer. Minnesota's ball, Ariel McDonald across the timeline. McDonald. Goes right to Bashan Leonard on the wing to Nate Tubbs. Tubbs holds against Calvert Chaney. Bounces to McDonald. He fires another three. No good this time. Rebound inside. Tolander. Back up and he misses. Carter with the rebound. Back up. Block the whistle. And a foul called against IU. Matt Nover will get nailed on this one. So Nover has his first foul of the ball game. And Indiana right now with a 9-6 deficit to deal with. And I think we got free throws coming from Randy Carter. So Carter will go to the free throw line. Carter on the season has hit just 60% of his free throws. So he hasn't been prevalent from the line so far this season. He averages 11.9 points to ball game. And he fires up this free toss. No good. He'll have one more. Carter now a junior has been an integral part of this Gopher program since he's been here. Started as a freshman last year, played until he got hurt, and struggled the rest of the season with that injury. And Carter ready for free throw number two. This one is good. Randy Carter has his fifth point, and now it is a four-point Gopher lead at 10-6. Full-court pressure applied. Up-court pass, and Greg Graham couldn't hang on to cover Cheney's pass. They turn it over for the fourth time. Max, this is very similar to the Ohio State start Indiana had. Very, very much so. And Indiana can't afford to get behind this ball club up here. Nate Tubbs will trigger it in. Tubbs looks, fires it into McDonald. McDonald drives it toward the right side, got it by Pat Graham. Clears it baseline to Tubbs. He drives on Calvert, back out to McDonald. McDonald again to Tubbs. He lets a long jumper fly. This one is no good. Rebound pulled out by Carter, back up, and he missed it again. Rebound batted away, and Colander comes up with it. And here's the pass inside to McDonald, and he missed it inside. And Carter again, and a whistle. And they're going to call Brian Evans for a foul. Indiana is struggling to hang on to the basketball inside. 
Indiana's getting out beat right now on the boards, eight to one. Brian Evans picks up his first foul of the ball game. But the Hoosiers are getting banged hard on the rebounding effort by Minnesota. And again, it's Randy Carter at the line. He's got five points, trying for his sixth. As he fires the first one, rattles home. Bounced in the rim twice and to the backboard and then went through. He's got six points. So now it's a five-point Minnesota lead, and Carter will try to double the Hoosiers with a 12-6 score if he hits number two. In the air, got it. Seven for Randy Carter. Minnesota on top. Here's the inbound to Calvert. Back off and goes off Minnesota. Indiana will control. Colander touched it last. The full court pressure is bothering IU. Greg Graham will inbound the ball. Holds and looks. Gets it to Pat Graham. Pat jumps it back to Greg. They break the pressure. Quickly down the floor. Greg Graham is fouled by Bashan Leonard. Leonard will be called for his first foul. Indiana will get the ball out of bounds. Again, Clem Haskins is up screaming. And Indiana will take it on the far sideline. Out of bounds, Greg Graham will inbound the ball. Slaps it, gives it to Pat Graham. Pat starts to drive right, spins back left in the lane, bounces to Madden over baseline. He's cut off. He looks for help, clears it off to Pat Graham. Now at the cover. Calvert Chaney, right side, pulls up, back off to Brian Evans. Evans inside to Nover, turns around, puts it up in his foul. Colander gets nailed in his first foul of the ball game, and Matt Nover will go to the line. 15.48 on the clock. The Hoosiers are down six, 12 to six, here in the early going. And so far, Max, it's been a, not a transition ball game. It has been very much a half-court contest. And so far on the boards, Minnesota has dominated. Well, they really have. And that's been the, the difference in this game so far. The Minnesota ball club has had several second and third shots already. Jason Walton, who has a bit of a sprained ankle problem, has checked in for the first time, replacing Nate Tubbs. Madden over at the line for IU has two points. Fires up this free one, and he got it. Nothing but net as Matt Nover gets his third point of the ball game. And Nover has a good free throw shoot, a good free throw shooting style. He just hadn't hit many this year, about 50%. And he makes both of these. He's got four points. The Hoosiers are within four at 12 to 8. 15 48 on the clock. Time to score. The score IU trailing Minnesota 12 to 8. Back after the 60 second network timeout. Great game for copyright, Bob. And how about that star player, Bob? Oh, the Canon NT6060 copier. Fires a copy a second. And the Canon NT6060 has amazing depth. Holds a million sheets. Now, Bob. OK, 6100. Backed by professional service technicians. Billions of them. Bob. OK, a lot. And each has 70 years of experience. Bob. Well, five's the average. Copyright. The choice. The Canon NT6060 is just plain amazing. And it's from copyright. Call them today. Hey, speaking of ears, Bob. Yeah, Bob. Are those gray hairs I see? The Hoosier Lottery reminds basketball fans that you have to play to win. Dave the Dribbler Nelson looks for star shooter Swiss Sampson for the final shot. Where is he? Oh, no, the Swisters on the sideline signing autographs. The All-Stars lose a heartbreaker all because of a seven-foot ego trip. Get in the game and win. Play the Hoosier Lottery. Play the Hoosier Lottery's newest instant game. Crash the boards and pull down $1,000 instantly. There are three chances to win in this basketball game from the Hoosier Lottery. Well, back once again at Williams Arena. We have 15.48 on the clock. Minnesota leading Indiana 12 to 8. And for the 20th consecutive year, IU basketball games are brought to you over a statewide network of radio stations numbering over 50 strong, including WRSW in Warsaw, WMDH in Newcastle, WSLM in Salem, and WOOO in Shelbyville. We're extremely proud to have these stations as a part of this year's IU network. And we also, again, welcome the Armed Forces Radio Network for today's ballgame. Well, in the first game, Minnesota out-rebounded Indiana by 5, 26 to 21. As we mentioned, it's an 8 to 1 advantage right now. At this time in the first game also, Indiana was down by a 14 to 4 margin. So there are some similarities as far as the scoring is concerned at this point, as the Hoosiers trail by only four. Indiana's taken only three shots, hit two of them. Up the court, Ariel McDonald will bring it for Minnesota. Indiana's made no changes in its lineup as of yet. Nate Tubbs is the only change with Jason Walton going in for him for Minnesota. Backcourt pass McDonald drives right side to Vashon Leonard. He goes baseline, fires, misses, rebound inside, batted away, picked off by Calvert Cheney. 
Chaney clears it out of there. He gives it up court to Greg Graham. Graham across the timeline. Slows the top of the key. Looks at left. Now having trouble. Finally clears to Calvert. Back off to Greg who backs it out on the deep, on the offensive dribble. Goes right to Brian Evans. A zone being used by Minnesota now. Graham inside to Nover. Fade away jump shot. Go out of the foul. Matt Nover. Hands his sixth point of the contest on a fadeaway bomb in the lane. And he'll go to the line with a chance at a three-point play that could draw Indiana within one. Fifteen minutes, three seconds to go. First half of action, and Matt Nover already asserting himself. He's two for two right now from the uh, field. And two for two from the line. So he'll try to keep it perfect on the afternoon as he eyes his third free-throw attempt of the day. It's in the air, and it's good. Matt Nover with seven points now, and Indiana is within one, 12 to 11. Here's Ariel McDonald on the right wing pass to Jason Walton. Walton back out to McDonald, who goes on the dribble left and goes right side with a pass to Walton. Walton out to Carter. Carter down low to Colander. Colander kicks it off to Walton, who drives baseline. Cut off, gives it to Colander, who shoots, misses, and a foul. Ryan Evans, I believe, just picked up number two. Evans Max, it seems, has not been able to compete inside today on the boards. He is struggling in that regard, and each time that they go into Colander, he's getting pushed around a lot. 11.45 on the clock, first half, or 14.45, my apology, and Minnesota is leading 12 to 11. Colander fires the free throw way short. Colander's a 62% shooter from the stripe, and he eyes his second attempt trying to give Minnesota a two-point lead. Ernest Zigamazabo is getting set to come in. Colander fires, got it. So Colander has his first point of the ball game, and Zigamazabo comes in to replace Colander. Colander at 6'9", Zigamazabo at 6'9", and they both weigh about the same, although actually Zigamazabo is 10 pounds heavier at 235. He is a junior. Now across the timeline, Greg Graham for IU, Hoosiers down two. Graham backcourt pass to Pat Graham. Pat, left side to Calvert Cheney. He fakes, drives it inside, turns around, clears to Matt Nover. Nover, back outside of the dribble, looks for help. Bounces to Brian Evans. Inside to Calvert, all and all up in there. Calvert Cheney's first two. And Calvert somehow lost his defender that time. It was by himself to tie the score at 13. Here's the inside pass thrown away. Brian Evans battles for it. Jason Walton, however, comes out with it. Pat Graham knocks it free to Calvert Cheney. Calvert slows it down to the right wing. Gives it to Greg Graham. Back to Calvert. Calvert fakes, drives in, pulls up, fires, and missed it. The rebound comes off to Jason Walton. Walton's got it for Minnesota, and the Gophers still have a tie at 13. Here's Randy Carter. He fires an 18-footer. He got it. Randy Carter bangs home his ninth point of the ball game. He's had the hot hand early for the Gophers. 15-13, Minnesota. 13.40 on the clock, across the timeline, Greg Graham with the ball. Guarded by McDonald, back to the man-to-man -man defense by Minnesota. Pat Graham in backcourt, back to Greg. Greg, back to Pat. He goes left to Calvert. Calvert, baseline pass to Nover, he drives inside, kicks it out to Pat Graham. Pat now tries to go left wing. He goes toward the baseline again, brings it out to Greg Graham. Greg looks it inside. Now Greg on the hold, drives it into the lane. Jumps it back out to Calvert. He fires up a three-pointer and got it. Calvert Cheney, a fifth point of the contest. The Hoosiers have taken their first lead of this ball game at 16-15. Now, Ariel McDonald for Minnesota to Vashon Leonard right wing. Pass to Carter. Carter on the wing holds. He looks in, gives to Zygma Zabo. He gives it back to McDonald. He drives and fires a 16-footer off the rim. No, Brian Evans has got the rebound. Evans clears to Calvert Cheney. Cheney across the timeline. Calvert on the dribble against Walton. Gives it to Greg Graham, top of the key. Graham takes it left side, takes it down low, stops, bows baseline to Nover. Matt gets it to Pat Graham for a 12-foot shot, and it's no good. Rebound batted up and pulled out of there by Minnesota. Walton got the board to McDonald. Indiana still by one at 16-15. Here's McDonald on the dribble between the legs, back out to Walton, who fires and misses. Rebound, Brian Evans. Evans pulls it out for his second rebound in succession. Up court to Pat Graham. Down low to Calvert. He turns. Has it knocked away and pulled out of there by Minnesota. The turnover is Indiana's fifth. So the Gophers have it back again. But Sean Leonard holds up two fingers in backcourt. Clock is down inside 12 minutes of the first half. Minnesota by 
trailing by one. Here's McDonald to Zigamazabo. He turns on the right wing. Cross-court pass goes to McDonald on the left wing. McDonald inside to Vashawn Leonard. Fakes, fires it up, and got it. Vashawn Leonard gets one off the backboard. And it's 17 to 16 as the Gophers retake the lead by a point. Here comes Greg Graham. Graham slides it left to Calvert Shady. Calvert spin dribble. A whistle. We got a foul call. The shot's not going to count. The foul will go against Minnesota. And this one, I believe, is on Jason Walton. We'll wait and see. And we're going to have a timeout call with the score. Minnesota 17, Indiana 16. 11.22 to go in this first half of play. We'll be back after the 60-second network timeout. Here's a tax update from the Indiana CPA Society. If you are self-employed, you should be aware that late last year, Congress extended the health insurance deduction for an additional six months. That means you can deduct 25% of the amount you paid for health insurance before July 1st of last year for coverage before that date. For more information on this or other tax and business matters, contact a certified public accountant or the Indiana CPA Society. CPAs make a difference. When was the last time you thought about your electricity? Never, right? Well, there's a reason for that. It's called Indiana's Consumer-Owned Rural Electric Cooperatives. And we've been providing you and a million other people with reliable electric service for 55 years. And we've invested over $2 billion to bring you electricity for conveniences like TVs, refrigerators, toasters, and much more. Of course, there's a reason Indiana's rural electric cooperatives work so hard to serve you. You are, after all, our owners. Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. You're listening to 1550 AM WCBL and 103.9 FM WIMC Crawfordsville. Well, Indiana right now trailing Minnesota 17-16. We've got 11-22 to go on this first half of play, Max. And so far, this ball game has been exactly as anticipated. It's been tough. It certainly has. And here was another game that must have been tough. Iowa beat Michigan State 66-64 in a game that has just been completed. Minnesota's hit only two of their last 11 shots. That's 18%. Six of 16 for this game, 38%. Indiana's taken only five shots. Hit on five, 63%. Rebounding was 8-1. to one. It's now 10-4 to four in favor of Minnesota. You say I just hit only five or made only, uh, or taken only five? Taken eight shots and hit five. I got you. All right, Brian Evans will inbound for IU. Indiana has the ball underneath their own hoop. Wait, Jason Walton was called for that last foul, his first. The inbound comes to Calvert Chaney. Down low to Greg Graham. He fakes the three, brings it back outside. Damon Bailey has checked in for IU, replacing uh, Pat Graham. And Greg Graham has it back out to Damon. Nope, it's not Pat that's out of the ball game. Who is it? Here down low is Damon driving shot. Nobody draws the foul. Zygma Zabo is nailed on the personal. And Brian Evans is the guy who's sitting down for IU. It was uh, Damon Bailey replacing Brian. The Zygma Zabo has his first foul of the game, and that's the 17th foul against uh, Minnesota thus far. So the Hoosiers are in the one-and-one, one, although this is a two-shot foul. Damon was fouled driving to the hole in the act of shooting. Bailey flies the shot up, and it is good. Bailey's first point of the ball game. He'll have an opportunity for one more. 75% shooter in Big Ten play from the line, 72% for the season. Bailey tries to get number two to drop, and does. And Indiana's got the lead for the second time of this ball game at 18-17. to 17. Up the floor comes Minnesota. Ariel McDonald with it in backcourt. McDonald looks at right side, then comes left to Jason Walton. Walton holds, then starts it to the left wing. Walton brings it outside to Nate Tubbs, who's re-entered for Minnesota. Down the floor goes to McDonald on the left wing. McDonald looks it inside. Back out it comes to him, Tubbs. Tubbs circles right. Dana Carter's or Dana Jackson's in for the first time. Here is Walton once again on a spin move to the baseline, cut off by Graham. Walton looks for help, having trouble. The ball's thrown inside, a battle for it, a whistle, and what do we got? A foul call, I believe, on Bailey. And that was not a good call at all. Bailey got called for a foul inside. That's his first of the ball game. That was a scramble for the ball. That's inadvertent contact. That was a governor's call. Well, Tubbs 
will inbound, and Jason Walton will sit down. In comes Vashon Leonard once again. 18-17, IU by one. 10-29 to go first half. The inbound pass comes to McDonald. McDonald against Calvert Cheney. Goes baseline, brings it back out to the wing. Now the bounce pass to Tubbs in backcourt. Tubbs circles left to Vashon Leonard. Down low to Zigamazabo. Turn around, jump shot. Good. <laughs> Ernest Zigamazabo gets his first two points of the ball game. And on a turnaround, that's pretty unusual. This Minnesota crowd is really buzzing about it as Minnesota takes the lead back by one. Pat Graham with the ball. Goes left side to Bailey. Bailey back to Pat. Pat eyes the three. Bounces low to Bailey. The ball's battered away out of bounds. It'll belong. Oh, it's going to belong to Minnesota. Or to Minnesota. That is the sixth turnover now by Indiana. Pat Knight's coming off the bench. So is Todd Leary. 9.55 to go in this first half. Indiana down one. Minnesota ball with McDonald in backcourt on the dribble. McDonald slides it right, comes off to Vashon Leonard, who goes left side to Dana Jackson. Jackson holds, looks low, cross courts it off to Vashon Leonard for a three try, and he got it. Vashon Leonard's fifth point of the ball game, and Minnesota suddenly leads it by four, 22 18. Now Pat Graham to Calvert Cheney. Outside to Nover. Nover back out to Greg Graham. Graham goes to Damon Bailey who fires a three-pointer. Got it! Damon Bailey cans his first field goal, his fifth point of the ball game, and counters that other three. 22-21 in the end of down one. McDonald looks inside, goes outside to Jackson, in low to Mazinga Mazabu, who lays it up and in. Good play by Minnesota. Mazinga Mazago's fourth point. And that was a beautiful little give-and-go play. 24-21, and there's a throwaway. Greg Graham just threw the ball out of bounds. And here comes Todd Leary and Pat Knight into the lineup for Pat Graham and Greg Graham. 24-21, Minnesota by three in Indiana with defensive pressure now at the midcourt line. Todd Leary with a big, huge, uh, looks like uh, bandage around his left knee. Now the right side pass comes over to Vashon Leonard, who drives, puts it up, and it's blocked for the foul. Calvert Cheney will get nailed on this one. That'll be his first foul of the ball game. 8.44 left in this first half. And going to the free throw line will be Vashon Leonard, who is a good free throw shooter, hitting 79% of the season. India, a little bit sluggish on that play. Cheney let him get right around him. He had no chance, probably should not have even attempted to stop him, although it looks like it's going to be a two-point play either way. Ryan Wolf, it looks like, is getting set to check in for Minnesota. And the free throw is up and in by Vashon Leonard. He's got his sixth point of the ball game, and the Gophers right now have jumped back out to a four-point lead. Ryan Wolf checking into the lineup for Minnesota. So it's Wolf, Vashon Leonard, Nate Tubbs, Ernest Zigamazabo, and Dana Jackson in the lineup for the Gophers. Leonard fires it up and got it. Rattled it home. Leonard's seventh point. Five-point Minnesota lead at 26-21. 840 on the clock. Bailey crosses the timeline, gives to Todd Leary in backcourt. Todd fakes on Ryan Wolf, drives it right. He looks, gives it outside to Pat Knight. Left side to Damon Bailey. Bailey down low to Calvert. The ball's batted out of bounds by Minnesota. Indiana will have it on the far sideline in front of the Gopher bench. Damon Bailey looks to get it in, does to Calvert Cheney. Calvert against Jackson now, clears it outside to Todd Leary. Leary against Wolf, drives left, takes it down to the left wing, brings it back outside, gives the ball to Pat Knight. Knight looks inside, brings it back left, gives it to Madden over, who goes baseline, pulls up underneath, trying to put it up, and he's fouled. Matt Nover will go to the free throw line. The Gopher fans booing every whistle against their hometown team. 8.07 to go, first half, and Indiana's Matt Nover will go to the line. I think they're taking their cue from their basketball coach. I've never seen uh, Haskins quite as active as he is uh, right now. Matt Nover is three for three from the line today, and that one rattles in. He's got his eighth point of the contest. He'll have one more opportunity. 26-22. Indiana down four. Nover will try to cut it to three. 
Matt Eyes' second attempt. Up it goes. It is good. Matt Nover's got his ninth point. 26-23. The Gophers are a three-point leader. Chris Reynolds getting set to make his first appearance for IU. The right side pass comes off to Jackson. Jackson outside the Tubbs. Left side to Wolf. Ryan Wolf. Back out it comes to Bashan Letter, who spins in the lane, fires it up, and they're going to call another foul. Calvert Chaney. Calvert just picked up his second personal. Bob Knight said there should have been a traveling violation first, but will not get any help from the official on that one. The shot does count. Leonard's got his ninth point. He's going to have a chance at a three-point play here that will make it a six-point lead if he connects. Calvert will sit down. Chris Reynolds comes in. So IU right now is down five, but it could become their biggest lead once again at six. That's the biggest that Minnesota's enjoyed thus far. And it could become a six-point lead again as Leonard flies it in the air and drops it in. But Sean Leonard now has 10 points. Timeout is called and the score. Minnesota 29, Indiana 23. We'll be back after the 60-second network timeout. Roy, I'm sorry you ran out of propane in the middle of your steak. Is it pretty rare? Oh, oh the plastic packaging isn't even melted yet. Huh? The, the, the thick white or the, the thin see-through stuff, Roy, huh? Natural gas grills delicious meals for pennies, and you'll never run out. It's the ideal energy. When my shower ran out of hot water, I had this little trick to keep me warm. I used to sink. Well, I mean, it's, it's safer than dancing, isn't it? Okay, prettier, too. Natural gas technology means more hot water for less. It's the ideal energy for your family. Hear that? Wow, it even sounds warm. Is it because my ears are big? No, it's because I chose gas heat. Dumbo. Today's natural gas heating technology means comfort and savings. It's the ideal energy for your home. For new information on today's natural gas technology and the ideal energy, call Indiana Gas at 1-800-777-4414. Well, back once again at Williams Arena, 7.50 to go in this first half, and Minnesota enjoying a six-point lead for the second time today, 29-23. to Well, they're enjoying it because they've made the last five shots. You recall at the last time out, we talked about them making only two of their last shot, 11. Now they've hit five in a row. They're shooting 10 of 20, 50%. They have outshot Indiana by 11 attempts so far in this game. Indiana has taken only nine shots. They've hit on six of them, but they've made only one field goal since that last time out, as Minnesota has really dominated the play. And Don, Greg Graham, who was in there for a while, has not even put up a shot in this game while he was in there. Of course, he's out right now. Indiana's got to pick up its scoring someplace. Pat Knight, David Bailey, Todd Leary, Matt Nover, and Chris Reynolds, the lineup for IU. It's Pat Knight inbounds to Todd Leary. Leary will bring it down against Leonard. Todd across the timeline and backcourt spins, gives to Chris Reynolds, goes right to Damon Bailey. He tries to move baseline, comes back out against Tubbs, drives it right, bounces to Nover. Nover back outside to Chris Reynolds, down to Bailey. Bailey goes left to Pat Knight. Pat, top of the key, goes to Bailey on the right wing. Bailey slides it left, gives it off to Chris Reynolds, back out to Todd Leary. Fires up a three and hits! Todd Leary, a huge bucket there for IU. His first points of the ball game on his first shot, and it's 29-26. Minnesota by three. Letter with the ball, left wing pass comes off to Dana Jackson. Jackson outside to Ziga Mazabo. Ziga Mazabo clears it off, baseline to Ryan Wolf. Wolf travels, and they turn it over. Indiana will have the ball out of bounds. And Knight again was up off the bench in a hurry. They were going to make sure that that traveling violation was called. But in fact, the whole coaching staff was up. 29-26. Minnesota by three. The Hoosiers, however, with a basketball and a chance to get it down to one, maybe even tie it with a three. Here's Bailey. Damon takes it inside the lane, gives it to Pat Knight. Pat Back out it comes to Damon Bailey, who fakes, drives right, gives it into Nover, lays it out. Oh, what a great left-handed move. Matt Nover's got his 11th point of the ball game. It's a one-point contest. Indiana down by just one, 29-28. 6.38 to go. Randy Carter, who's back in, holds on the right wing. Outside to Nate Tubbs. Tubbs gives to Wolf. Wolf drives right side, pulls up, fires, and got it in the foul. It's offensive, it won't count. Ryan Wolf 
gets nailed on his first foul of the ball game. A charge. And the Hoosiers will get the ball back. So, Chad Colander returns to the lineup for Minnesota for Ernest Nigamazabo. And also coming back in for the Gophers is Ariel McDonald. Indiana with a chance to retake the lead. Here's Chris Reynolds across the timeline. Off to Todd Leary. Leary kicks it out to Matt Nover. Goes to Chris Reynolds. Right side to Leary. Fires another three. And this time no good. And Randy Carter lost it out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Damon Bailey was there. Randy Carter looked like he was more interested in where Damon was than where the ball was. Pat Knight will inbound. Gets it to Matt Nover. Outside to Chris Reynolds. Reynolds drives it inside. And a charging foul on Chris. Reynolds gets down on his first foul. 29-28, Minnesota with a one-point lead, but they've got the ball back again. 6-11 to go in this first half. Well, I don't know what Chris thought he was doing on that play, for goodness sakes. Ariel McDonald will bring it up in the walk. Leary picks him up. And goes right side with a pass to Carter. Randy Carter inside to Tubbs. Tubbs back to McDonald. McDonald holds, goes left to Bashan Leonard, who fakes the three, fires it back to McDonald. Now again to Leonard. He fires the three this time. It's good. Bashan Leonard's got his 13th point of the ball game. That's his second three-pointer. And the lead jumps back up to four, 32-28. And we got a whistle, and somebody is shaken up at the other end. Pat Knight got hurt. Pat Knight is the guy shaken up. They call a foul. Is it intentional? Sure I is. believe it was. They called an intentional foul. Randy Carter is the guy who got nailed on it. His second foul of the ball game. That's an intentional foul call. That means Indiana's Pat Knight will go to the line for two free throws. And Indiana will get the ball back. Well, Pat has had a tough time this year from the stripe. One of five. What a great opportunity to uh, turn that around right here. I'm not sure what it was about, Max. It was on the baseline. I never saw it. I didn't either. I'll have to confess I didn't see it. What now? Uh, uh, Pat was kind of shaken up. I think Coach, uh, Father Coach here would kind of like to uh, take him out, maybe let him settle down, bring in Greg Graham. Boy, that Knight is really upset about something. I don't know what it is. Well, Bob Knight is really jawing Phil Bova. And Phil Bova walked him back to the... Uh, coach's box. Clem Haskins is all the way down and near the Indiana coaching box now. <laughs> well, everybody's doing a little positioning here, to say the least. Well, Haskins has been on it from the very start. Knight's been relatively quiet until the last, oh, six or seven minutes. Pat Knight at the line with two shots coming. First one's in the air. It's short. He'll get one more. And then Indiana will get the ball back. And the crowd is booing lustily. Pat Knight's second shot, good. Pat Knight scores his first point of the ball game. Greg Graham now checks in for IU. Chris Reynolds will sit down. Pat Knight will inbound for the Hoosiers underneath the IU basket. IU is down three, 32-29. Knight gets it into Todd Leary. Leary brings it out, spins it back left, spins right again, and bounces to Greg Graham. Graham gets it off to Pat Knight. Knight takes it toward the right side. Looks it low, comes out to Damon Bailey. Bailey gets it off to Leary. Turnaround jump shot, no good, and the rebound comes off to Randy Carter. Carter clears to Ariel McDonald across the timeline. McDonald goes outside to Carter. Carter pulls up and gives to Leonard on the right wing. Leonard outside to Tubbs. Tubbs inside, pass goes to Carter. He turns, a whistle blows, and we got a travel. Five turnovers on Minnesota. That was on Randy Carter, and I saw it before it happened. I thought it was a travel before they ever blew the whistle. 32-29. Indiana is down three, and Minnesota back on D. Here's Greg Graham on the left wing. Down inside to Damon. Damon turns around on Nate Tubbs, brings it back outside to Pat Knight. Knight circles toward the top of the key. Knight looks it inside, goes to Damon Bailey. Bailey back to Pat Knight. Brings it back out of the dribble, looks it inside, clears it to Greg Graham. Graham turns around, fires out to Todd Leary. Leary now 
Looks low. Circles left to Pat Knight on the wing. Pat, raised baseline. Baseline cut. Gives it off to Matt Mover. Shot clock's down to eight. Here's Greg Graham. He slides it left. Pulls up on the baseline. Three seconds to Pat Knight for a long bomb, and it's no good. Rebound tipped up out of bounds, and it'll belong to Minnesota. Gophers will have it. Indiana's a three-point trailer in the ballgame, 32-29. Back up the floor come the Gophers with 4.21 left in the half. Ariel McDonald to Vashon Leonard. Off right side to Randy Carter. Again to Leonard. Leonard looks it in, brings it back out, takes it to the free throw line, kicks it to McDonald for a three, and he missed it. Rebound, Greg Graham for IU. Graham brings it up the floor. Greg takes it left side all the way, puts it up, missed the shot. Rebound, Bailey back up, no. Tipped it up, no. Tipped out, and it's finally pulled out of there by Cubs. Cubs the other way to McDonald. McDonald inside to Carter. Puts it up and missed it. Tip up is good. Well, Sean Leonard, his 15th point of the ball game on a tip there. And Minnesota's crowd is going crazy. Here's Bailey from 14 feet and hits. Damon Bailey, his seventh point of the ball game. 34-31. It's a three-point ball game again. 3.28 to go in the half, and this one has been a dogfight. Left side pass goes to Carter. Carter holds, gives it out to Colander. He gives to Leonard, a three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound inside, batted away, and pulled out of there by Nover. Fast break pass to Leary. Leary down the floor, takes it all the way, puts it up, scores! And a foul! Todd Leary with a sensational move. His fifth point of the ball game, and he drew the foul. He'll go to the stripe with a chance to tie it at 34, and that was some kind of gutsy play by Leary. The foul call on Minnesota. And we're waiting to see on who. They say it was on Bashan Leonard. That is his second of the ball game. So Todd Leary to the line. Leary, a 6'3 junior out of Lawrence North, cans the free one. He has not missed yet this year from the free throw stripe in Big Ten plays. Now 19-19. The score, Indiana 34, Minnesota 34. 3.09 to go first half. Back after the 60-second timeout, this is the Indiana University Basketball Network. Right now at Wills Fargo RV Sales and Service, 1993 Jayco travel trailers are coming and going. Many are going out as fast as they come in, and I'm talking about new 93 fifth wheels, travel trailers, fold downs, everything in the RV line is available at Wills Fargo. But they do have a pretty good selection on hand as well, including some cargo trailers, utility trailers, auto carriers, and Wills Fargo is your place to find pickup caps, covers, and toppers. See them all at Wills Fargo, one mile east of the junction of 41 and 136 near Vetersburg. Some home equity credit makes people uneasy, but not Equity Reserve at National City Bank. Equity Reserve is a no-nonsense, variable-rate credit line for fiscally responsible people who use common sense and good judgment. Right now at National City Bank, you can receive 8.25 APR and no closing cost. Appraisal fee may be assessed. So stop by a nearby National City Banking office to apply for your Equity Reserve credit line. Then relax. National City Bank, going the distance for you at all Montgomery County locations and equal housing lender. Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where Indiana is trailing, or rather has tied Minnesota at 34-34. We have three minutes and nine seconds to go in this first half. And Max, this has been some kind of contest already. There's a lot of emotion out there on both sides. Well, Indiana shooting 53% on 10 of 19. They've made only three of their last nine, but in spite of that, they've pulled even. Minnesota has made six of their last nine, but 12 of 25 for 48%. Indiana's three-point shot is back. They've hit four out of five here this afternoon. Minnesota's three out of four. Rebounding starting to even up 14 to eight right now in Minnesota's favor. And it was interesting, Don, and Indiana caught up with two basically non-shooters when they had Knight and Reynolds in there. Well... IU has tied it. Minnesota has the ball. Ariel McDonald with it. Takes it left side to Jason Walton, who's checked in. Walton looks inside, pulls it back out, gives it to Ariel McDonald, top of the key. He goes right to Nate Tubbs. Tubbs drives baseline. Cut off at a double team. Fires it anyway. Missed the shot. Rebound. Carter inside. Puts it up in there. Randy Carter has his 11th point of the ball game. 36-34. I'll tell you what, Carter has been a handful on the boards. Two-point Minnesota lead. 
Here's Pat Knight with the basketball. Pat holds on the left side, gives it outside to Todd Leary. Pat Graham has come in. Here's Pat firing a jumper off the rim. No good. Rebound inside to Carter. Carter for Minnesota. Clears it away to Ariel McDonald. Across the timeline. McDonald starts it right side to Tubbs. Tubbs in to Car Walton. Walton outside to McDonald for a three. No good. Rebound. Colander back up. No good. And a foul call on Pat Knight. Pat Knight will be called for the foul. His first of the ball game. 36-34. Minnesota by two. 2.06 to go first half. And Minnesota's going to make a change. And Dana Jackson will check in for Randy Carter. Chris Reynolds is also going to check in for IU here momentarily. Chris will come into the ball game and replace Todd Leary. Indiana is not blocking out well under there. They're letting Minnesota get some really easy rebounds and going right back up with it. At the line is Colander, who is one of two from the line today, and that's his only point. And this one drops in. He hit the front of the rim, and it somehow crawled over the lip. 37-34, Minnesota with a three-point lead. Now the Hoosiers have been playing a long time with Chaney on the bench with two fouls. Evans has two. Second shot is high off the rim. No, and the rebound, Matt Nover for Indiana. A double, triple team, and he finally clears it out of there as Chris Reynolds has it. Reynolds across the timeline, takes it toward the left side. Now, backs it out. Zone being used by Minnesota again. Here's Reynolds to Greg Graham, fires a three. No good, rebound pulled out of there by Dana Jackson for Minnesota. Now up the court come the Gophers, Ariel McDonald and Nate Tubbs. Tubbs holds on the wing left, gives it down low to Walton. He turns inside, lost the handle, put it up and got the shot. That was pure unadulterated luck and everybody in the field house knows it. 39-34. He lost the handle on the ball as it went up and the ball went in. Reynolds to Graham. Greg fakes, pulls it back out, fires it off to Pat Knight. Now to Greg Graham to Chris Reynolds. Back to Greg Graham in the corner to Pat Knight. Into Matt Nover. Turns around. Cross courts it out to Pat Graham. Now to Greg Graham. Greg, top of the key. Again to Pat to Chris Reynolds. Reynolds. Back outside to Greg Graham for another three. And he got it. Greg Graham cans his fourth point of the ball game. That's his first field goal. 39-37. Indiana needed it. They're down just two again. 53 seconds to go in the half. Ariel McDonald slides it right side, gives it off to Tubbs. Tubbs on the wing, lobs it in low. It goes to Jackson outside to McDonald. McDonald inside the circle, lobs it left to J Walton, who puts it up and missed it. And the rebound pulled out by Pat Knight. Down the floor comes Indiana. 35 seconds to go on the half. Here's the pass to Greg Graham, and the Hoosiers will look for the last shot. Greg Graham takes it back near the midcourt line. Minnesota drops back into the zone, so they will give Indiana the last shot. And now they approach with 20 seconds to go, but they're not guarding close enough to get a, a uh, count going. Greg Graham holds on. We're down to 13. Off to Pat Graham. Pat Graham with the ball with 10 seconds. And a whistle away from the ball and a foul on Nate Tubbs. Tubbs jawing the official Randy Drury. And the call is against Tubbs, I believe. And we've got free throws coming for the Hoosiers. And it'll be two shots. That's the 10th team foul against Minnesota. The foul called is not on uh, Tubbs at all. It's on uh, Chad Colander, and that's his second. No, it's his third. So Colander now has three personal fouls. At the line, it'll be Greg Graham for IU. Graham with four points. And he can tie it. He hits the first. He's got five. If he hits number two, it's a tie ball game with 9.4 seconds to go. Indiana's hit an 11 of 13 from the line today. Graham eyes number two and drills it. Six points for Greg Graham. The Hoosiers have tied it at 39. Up the court. Ziga Mazzabo gets it to Tubbs. Back to McDonald. We're down to six seconds. McDonald working to the fires off bell shot. No good. Rebound Matt Nover, and that's the way the half will close. Tied up. The Hoosiers battle from two six-point deficits. And at halftime, the Indiana Ball Club goes to the locker room, tied up with the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The score, Indiana 39, Minnesota 39. We'll be back with our halftime show after we pause for the 60-second network timeout. 
Say, neighbors, is that one of those new snapper lawn tractors I see in your garage? You betcha. This baby is built tough. And talk about power. <laughs> a Briggs IC with 12 horses, peerless 5-speed gear drive, 30-inch cutting deck with 6 cutting heights, 32-inch turning radius, 2-year limited warranty. Boy, you must have run into some cash to buy this snapper tractor a couple of months before the grass needs to be cut. Oh, not at all. I just use snap credit so I don't have to start paying for it until October. Besides, with snapper tractors starting at $14.99, these babies aren't going to last very long down at the snapper dealer. You know, neighbor, I think I'll go visit that snapper dealer before the spring rush starts. University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening. Well, back once again at Williams Arena, we are at halftime where the score is Indiana 39, Minnesota 39. Before we go further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. You're listening to 1550 AM WCBL and 103.9 FM WIMC Crawfordsville. Well, let's look now at the individual scoring in this first half of play where Indiana has tied things up with the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Individually, first of all, scoring-wise for the Gophers. Ariel McDonald hit a three-point field goal to start things off this afternoon and hasn't scored since. He has three points, one personal foul. But Sean Leonard was the hot hand for the first half for Minnesota. He fired in five field goals. Two of those were three-pointers. He also tossed in three free throws, 15 first-half points for Vashon Leonard. Chad Colander has a pair of free throws, two points at the break with three personal fouls. Jason Walton has one field goal, two points and one foul. Randy Carter came up with four field goals in the first half, along with three free throws. He has 11 first-half points and two personal fouls. Dana Jackson played, did not score or foul. Nate Tubbs has a field goal for two points, no fouls. Ernest Zigamazabo has a pair of field goals for four points and one foul. And Ryan Wolf played briefly, did not score, picked up one foul. So, Minnesota's leading scorer, Vashon Leonard with 15, followed by Randy Carter with 11. For Indiana, the Hoosiers had no points out of Chris Reynolds, one personal foul. Damon Bailey came in off the bench today and scored a pair of free throws, one three-point field goal and one regular field goal, seven first-half points and one foul. Matt Nover came up big in the first half. He picked up three field goals to go along with five free throws. He's five for five today from the line, 11 first-half points for Nover and one personal foul. Calvert Chaney had just one Make that two field goals, one of the three-point field goal, five first-half points, and two personal fouls. Greg Graham with a field goal, a three-point field goal, and three free throws. That uh, gives him six points for the ball game. A three-point field goal and three free throws, six points for Graham, no fouls. Ryan Evans did not score, picked up two personals. Pat Graham has a three-point field goal for three points and no fouls. Todd Leary with a three-point field goal, a regular field goal, and a free throw. Six points from Leary in the first half, no fouls. Pat Knight did not, um, well, I take that back. He did pick up a personal foul, and Pat hit one of two free throws in the ball game's first half. So Pat has one point, one foul. So Indiana led at the break with 11 points out of Matt Nover, second best in the ball club, the six from Todd Leary and from Greg Graham. Actually, Damon Bailey with seven would be second best. All right, Max, look at those team stats. Well, Indiana finishes shooting in the first half, 50% on 11 of 22. Minnesota is 14 of 31 for 45%. So the Gophers had nine more shots than Indiana did. They hit three more baskets. However, from three-point range, Indiana was five of seven this afternoon in the first half, 71%. Minnesota was three of four, 75%. Hoosiers went to the line 14 times, hit on 12 of them, 86%. Minnesota went to the line eight, 11 times, hit on eight, 
scored 73%. Minnesota controlling the boards and really strong early on. At one point, it was 8-1. to one. It was ended up 20-13 to 13 in Minnesota's favor. Indiana also turned the ball over again, as they did in the Ohio State game. They turned it over eight times, as Minnesota turned it over just five times. Indiana had two one-point leads in this game. The biggest lead for Minnesota has been a six-point lead at 12-6. to six. They've had three or four other five-point leads. Leonard at one point hit five straight shots for the Gophers. He finished five of nine. Matt Nover is perfect from both the field and the line. Three of three from the field and five of five from the free throw line. So that's the way uh, the team scoring looks in this first half as Indiana and Minnesota are all tied at 39 all. All right, we'll be back with the, our halftime guest here in a moment. But first, let's pause for the 60-second break. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. If you want to save money, invest in a Puritan water conditioning unit. With a Puritan water conditioner, you'll save money every day. The main reasons are you'll use 80% less detergent, and you'll eliminate costly repairs on your plumbing caused by lime, calcium, and iron deposits. Your heating and plumbing fixtures will last much longer. A Puritan water conditioner will save you money. Call today at 362-6340 or stop by Puritan Water Conditioning, 216 Lafayette Avenue in Crawfordsville. When I ain't fighting to your peppermint patty, I... I get the sensation. And when I take another bite... York Peppermint Patty, dark chocolate, cool mint. Get the sensation. Today's Big Ten game between Indiana and the University of Minnesota at halftime is 39-39. Terry Claypack seated beside us. And Terry, I appreciate your making this long haul up here. As I mentioned just a moment ago, Scott May had been kind enough to make a tape with me yesterday. But uh, about two minutes into the tape, something went wrong, and uh, we lost about a minute and a half. So I appreciate very much your coming up. I know it was a long haul for you. Max, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first trip to Williams Arena here at the University of Minnesota. I must say it's uh, certainly a throwback to, uh, to uh, an arena style that uh, you don't find very often in this country today. It's a little reminiscent of our old 7th Street, 7th, uh, Street uh, field house on the Bloomington campus. I understand a uh, major amount of money is... Um, uh, will soon be put into this arena, uh, and major renovation will occur. And uh, and yet, uh, as I said a moment ago, you don't see many arenas like this. Have you had an opportunity to walk around here and take a look at what they're doing? I was down in the uh, locker room with the team uh, just before the game started, and uh, and I did walk uh, through the hallways and around the concourse. And uh, um, it's 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 not a uh, it's not an arena like we're used to seeing. That's for sure. What about uh, up in the top here? Are you are you familiar at all what they plan to do in this part of it? I understand they're to add seats. I think that's right, Max, but I have not seen the plans. Uh, I know a little bit about the renovation. I uh, I think they want to improve the sight lines and, and add some seats and, uh, and certainly make the arena comply with the latest uh, code and ADA regulations. And so uh, we wish them well. Well, this thing, when I first started coming up here, Terry, which is a long time ago, it seated nearly 20,000. They have taken away some of the seats uh, since that time, so I think it's now in the neighborhood of 18, but it holds a lot of people. Yeah, you can see that, Max, and it's a very loud arena uh, because it's a bowl, uh, and that's one, a disadvantage, one disadvantage that we have with the Assembly Hall. There are many seats behind each of the baskets here, uh, unlike uh, the Assembly Hall in Bloomington. And, and what that does do for them is it allows them to, to create a crowd atmosphere that we don't get in Bloomington. Terry, we're going to come back and continue our conversation. We're at halftime. The score tied at 39 all. Let's pause 60 seconds. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. Last year, Tom's company suffered from rising disability costs. My employees are like family, so when they become disabled, I worry about them getting the right care. I also worry about the cost to my business. Disability costs are soaring, so my insurance premiums go up. When I have to train replacements, productivity goes down. Tom didn't know then that there was something he could do to manage his disability costs until the CNA insurance companies helped him minimize the chance that short-term disabilities would become long-term. Tom tells what happened. 
My broker recommended CNA, and let me tell you, CNA gave me a lot more than just a policy. They have a medical staff and a network of rehabilitation professionals who help my employees get the proper care and counseling right away and get back to work sooner. I always thought CNA offered insurance policies. I never thought they'd work so hard to save my company money. Ask your independent agent or broker about the CNA insurance companies and how CNA can work harder for you. CNA, for all the commitments you make. Back here again at Williams Arena in Minneapolis. It's a 39-39 score at halftime. Terry Clayfax, Vice President for Administration at Indiana University, alongside. You were talking about uh, the seats in close here in uh, Williams Arena, of course, with Assembly Hall having some problems. Uh, Terry, are there any plans or thoughts of anything to do anything to Assembly Hall? Well, we're always looking at uh, Assembly Hall, as we are every facility on the Bloomington campus uh, long term. I think there'll come a time, Max, when we uh, we look to increase the seating in Assembly Hall and probably improve uh, the sight lines. Uh, as you know, the Assembly Hall was, although it was built in the early 1970s or finished in the early 1970s, the building was actually designed in the 1950s and been along with the uh, Memorial Stadium uh, when the, uh, the the budget would not allow for Assembly Hall to be completed in the then in the early 60s. It was put on the shelf. And so when it, when it opened in 72, the building was essentially 15 years old. Uh, that means we have a lot of uh, problems with the building. Uh, uh, if you are a, a female and you attend games in Assembly Hall, I don't need to, to tell you how uh, inconvenient the, the ladies' restroom facilities are. Um, it's, uh, it's not the uh, best building in the world for handicap. And of course, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it, it, we have such a ticket demand, Max, that uh, I think we could sell 25,000 tickets easily. No one knows what we're going to do, uh, but we're always looking at ways to improve the building. It's an inflexible building because of the roof suspension uh, system that was uh, designed in. And so uh, whatever we do will be major, and it's, uh, it's not going to be anytime soon. Do you get any indication that even with an unlimited amount of money you could do anything with that oh bag. you could do something with the building uh, uh you could push out the ends you can make it a bowl uh you could do some things with the balcony there are things that can be done with the assembly hall uh, it's just a matter of the right time and uh and uh, that's probably down the road a little way but even with the suspended roof that's up there those kind of things could be done you could you could actually push out those end walls without removing the roof max and uh and we've we've looked at that many times and uh and it, it can be done. Well, obviously, uh, the many things you were talking about, there are problems, but I think tickets right now is the one that uh, seems to be the paramount thing. That if you could just somehow come up with another three or 4,000 seats, but I suppose we'd still be short. Well, I'm sure uh, basketball being what it is in the state of Indiana and at Indiana University, uh, I'm quite confident, as I think you are too, Max, that if we had 25,000 uh, season tickets available, uh, we would sell them out uh, in no time, just like we do the 17,200 we have today. Well, Terry, I appreciate your coming by here uh, and coming up into the uh, balcony here today. You've had quite a walk and you've got one going going back, but at least it's downhill from here. Uh, this is quite a place up here. I, we were laughing about the renovation. There's a car right on this thing we're using here it says 1949 <laughs> so this thing's been here a while i feel like i want to take a piece of it home with me but nevertheless uh, when we get back here next year it's going to be different but thanks very much for coming up for being our guest we'd like to give you this gift certificate from d dan gentlemen's and ladies clothiers in the north willow mall in indianapolis well, thank, thank you, you very much thank you it's a pleasure to be here thanks all right for inviting me. Derek clayfax vice president for indiana university up here with the team today uh, as is the president of the university and former vice president Ed Williams along on this trip, giving Indiana the support that they obviously need very much in this basketball game here today. Well, the official stats have come along, and they are pretty much as we gave you, 11 of 22 for Indiana in that first half, and even 50%, 5 of 7 from three-point range, 12 of 14 from the foul line. For the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 14 of 31, that's 45%, so I think that's uh, maybe a little bit... Uh, lower than we had given you and it's three of five from three-point range eight of eleven from the uh, uh foul line and the rebounding is a total of 18 to 12 is the official stat as far as rebounding is concerned well don both teams are back on the court and we're still dead even just where we started all right we'll be back to start our second half of this ball game in a moment but first let's pause for the 60 second network timeout to defend your soybeans against weeds. You need power. You 
need control. You need consistency. You need this squadron. Squadron herbicide for a higher level of soybean weed control. See your Cyanamid AgriCenter dealer. Read and follow label directions. Let's talk electricity. I have a few words. Indiana's consumer-owned rural electric cooperatives. Quite a mouthful, huh? Well, maybe our name's so long because we do so much. Like providing reliable electric service to over a million people across the state. Or investing over $2 billion into bringing you the electricity that offers you necessities like lights, refrigerators, washers and dryers, and much more. Indiana's rural electric cooperatives. But you don't need to call us by name. Just know we'll be there whenever you need us. Back once again at Williams Arena. We're about to get the second half underway for being our guest at halftime. Terry Claypax receives a gift certificate from D-Dance Gentlemen's and Ladies Clothier of Indianapolis. D-Dance has updated classic clothing, sportswear, and accessories for men and women. They're open daily Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Wednesday and Thursday open till 9. That's D-Dance Clothing to complement your lifestyle in West 86th Street at Township Line Road in the North Willow Mall in Indianapolis. Well, we're about to get the second half underway. Indiana and Minnesota deadlocked at 39-39. And both ball clubs ready to come back out of the floor. For Indiana, Damon Bailey, Matt Nover, Pat Graham, Greg Graham, and Calvert Cheney. For Minnesota, we have Chad Colander along with Ariel McDonald, Vashon Leonard, Randy Carter, and Nate Tubbs. Damon Bailey will trigger the inbound. He gets it in to Greg Graham. Graham will bring it up. Graham across the timeline. Moves it toward the right to Calvert Cheney, who fakes the shot, looks down low, can't find his man, brings it out to Damon, who lets a three fly, and he misses the rebound pulled in by Colander for Minnesota. Back the other way, the Gophers. Ariel McDonald on the right wing. Stops, clears it out to Bashan Leonard. Leonard looks low for Carter, can't find him. Goes to Tubbs, left side. Tubbs drives it in the lane. Kicks it out to Bashan Leonard. We got a whistle and a foul call, a block against Damon Bailey. So Bailey gets nailed in his second foul of the ball game. And the ball will belong to Minnesota out of bounds. 39 tie, 19-30, just underway in the second half. Don Fisher along with Max Skirvin. Welcoming once again the Armed Forces Radio Network to today's broadcast. Here's Bats pass to Leonard, who fires a jumper, missed it. Rebound inside, and we got a pushing foul on Colander from behind. Chad Colander has just picked up his fourth foul of the ball game on a push. And into the contest will come Ernest Zigamazabo for Minnesota. So Indiana will have the ball. Greg Graham in bounds to Calvert. Back to Graham. Graham across the timeline. Greg top of the key. Pat Graham has checked in for IU now. The bounce pass comes off. Pat has it. Gives it back right to Calvert. He fakes. Pulls up. Fakes again. Drives. Gives it out to Bailey. Bailey fakes. He gives it to Pat Graham who fires an 18-footer and hit it. Pat Graham's second bucket of the ball game is fifth point, and the Hoosiers have the early lead in the second half, 41-39. McDonald on the left wing, on the dribble, stops, looks inside, then turns around, clears it to Nate Tubbs. Tubbs on the baseline, drive against Graham, pulls up, fakes, fires, and missed it. Rebound batted up, scramble for it, tipped again, and the ball comes off the cover, Cheney for IU. Off to Greg Graham. Graham across the timeline, starts it right, gives to Pat Graham. Pat pulls it back out of there. Down low pass to Bailey. Bailey carries it away to Nover, who goes up, and he is, has the ball knocked away out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Good defensive play that time by Zygma Zabo for Minnesota. The inbound, Bailey to Calvert Cheney, who fires and hits. Calvert Cheney bangs home his first two of the second half, his seventh point of the game. It's 43-39. Indiana by four. Right wing to Nate Tubbs. Tubbs holds, starts his dribble, gives it off to Vashon Leonard. Back outside to McDonald, down low to Carter. Carter looks, turns around, dribbles it back out to the wing. Now fires it backcourt to McDonald. Ariel McDonald on the dribble against Bailey. Slides it left side, pulls up, lets it fly, missed the shot, rebound, Pat Graham. He gives to Greg Graham. Graham across the timeline, Greg takes it right. Back out it comes. Greg turns and clears to Bailey, who fakes, drives it in. Back out to Greg Graham. He fakes the three. 
Greg Graham tried to draw the foul, couldn't. Gives to Bailey. Back to Greg. Now to Calvert. Chaney lets a three fly. He hits it. Calvert Chaney's 10th point of the ball game. Indiana, 45. Minnesota, 39. And Calvert's second trail of the contest, and Minnesota calls timeout. Indiana, 45. Minnesota, 39. 17, 25 to go in this final half as Indiana explodes to start the second half of play back after the 60-second network break. The Hoosier Lottery reminds basketball fans that you have to play to win. Dave the Dribbler Nelson looks for star shooter Swiss Sampson for the final shot. Where is he? Oh no, the Swisters on the sideline signing autographs. The All-Stars lose a heartbreaker all because of a seven-foot ego trip. Get in the game and win. Play the Hoosier Lottery. Play the Hoosier Lottery's newest instant game. Crash the boards and pull down $1,000 instantly. There are three chances to win in this basketball game from the Hoosier Lottery. For years, you've run on the same premium gasoline. You didn't see a clear reason to switch. Until now. Introducing new improved Amoco Ultimate. Amoco Ultimate? The only premium gasoline that's crystal clear. Refined an extra step to remove harmful impurities called PNAs. PNAs? Harmful impurities that can rob your engine of performance and contribute to hydrocarbon exhaust emissions. Impurities other premiums leave in. Crystal clear Amoco Ultimate. New in this area. You expect more from a leader. Well, Indiana has jumped to a seven-point lead to start the second half in the first two minutes and 35 seconds. And, Max, that's a real boom to the IU club. It certainly is. Minnesota has come out firing blanks. They're 0 for 5 this half. Indiana 3 of 4 right now. And that last three-point shot, really a big shot by Cheney. Scoreboard was a little slow in recording it, but they slipped it up there. And, obviously, Indiana has the largest lead it's had because it only had a one-point lead on two occasions in that first half. Pat Graham, Greg Graham, Damon Bailey, Matt Nover, and Calvert Cheney to line up on the floor for IU. Minnesota returns with Randy Carter, Nate Tubbs, Ariel McDonald, Vashon Leonard, and Jason Walton, or is it Dana Jackson? It'll be Dana Jackson who has now taken over defensively on Calvert Cheney. Nate Tubbs will trigger the inbound. The Hoosiers with their biggest lead of the contest, 7, 46-39. They hadn't put the third point of that three-point shot of Cheney's on the board until they broke at the timeout. Now we're ready. Here's Minnesota on the attack as Carter, or Jackson rather, gives it outside to Tubbs. Now to McDonald. McDonald looks. Clears it off to Vashon Leonard. Leonard back off to McDonald. McDonald on the dribble. Inside. Pulls up a whistle. We got a foul call on Pat Graham. Pat Graham picks up personal number one. That's his first foul of the ball game. Indiana's a seven-point leader with 17.08 to go. Indiana would love to get a stop here and another bomb that falls at the other end. Clem Haskins is asking why it wasn't a shooting foul. The inbound pass will come from Bashan Leonard. Leonard looks inside, having trouble. Five-second violation. Five-second call against Minnesota. That's the seventh Minnesota turnover. Five-second call against Minnesota. The Hoosiers have the chance to take it up to nine, maybe even ten. Here's Calvert. Drives it left, drives inside, and is fouled by Dana Jackson. Jackson picks up personal number one. Indiana will get the ball out of bounds. 46-39, 16.58 on the clock. Damon Bailey will trigger the inbound underneath the IU basket now. The pass comes into Pat Graham, who fires the baseliner and hits! Pat Graham, his seventh point of the ball game, with the Hoosiers take it to a nine-point lead. Now, Ariel McDonald in backcourt. Off to Nate Tubbs' right wing. Tubbs looks low, finds McDonald baseline. He moves it out to the wing, gives it off to Jackson, who drives in the lane. Blocked shot by Calvert. Greg Graham comes out of the ball. Graham. Stops, pulls up, looks right, then fires an 18-footer, hits! Greg Graham! Unbelievable run by Indiana, the eighth point by Graham, the Hoosiers lead by 11. 50 to 39, apparently a foul the other way. Wait a second. Now, Phil Bova has pulled Calvert Chaney aside. I don't know what happened there. I don't know either, I was writing down the score, Don, I can't tell you. 
I don't know if somebody said something or the officials are trying to cool some tempers or what, but the Hoosiers lead by 11. 16-24 to go in the final half. Indiana on an 11-0 run. Here's McDonald to Tubbs. To McDonald on the wing. McDonald takes it outside, top of the key. Goes back to the left wing. Looks in, gives to Tubbs. Tubbs drives it left. He pulls it back out, gives to McDonald. Baseline left, he fires an 18-footer, and he hits. Pat Graham fell down, and that's how Ariel McDonald got three. That's only his second bucket. He's got five. Now, 50-41, IU a nine-point leader. Bounce pass goes to Calvert Cheney. Calvert, back out to Greg Graham. Graham starts to circle right, fakes it right, looks left, and having some trouble. Hen has it knocked away and a foul on Leonard. Rashawn Leonard has called for the foul, reaching over the top of Greg Graham that time, and that is the third foul on Bashan Leonard. I'll tell you what we're seeing, Max, some frustration on the part of the Gophers. Inbounding will be Bailey, gets it backcourt to Pat Graham. Pat on the right wing, gets it down low to Greg Graham, inside, puts it up and scores! Greg Graham with another big bucket, the Hoosiers get 10 out of Graham now, and it's 52-41. Indiana by 11. 15-25, right side, Ariel McDonald in the wing, a whistle away from the ball, and we got a pushing foul again on Pat Graham. Pat just got nailed on another. That'll be, I believe, his second of the ball game. So Pat Graham gets nailed on his second personal. A moment ago, there was conversation between Cheney and McDonald, and they just stopped him and said, let's get rid of this. The inbound pass comes to Randy Carter. Now to Tubbs. Tubbs drives it left side. There's a switch. Tubbs to the baseline. Cut off. Flips it outside to McDonald. Takes it to the free throw line. Back low out to Carter. And now we got a foul on Nover. Oh, it's not. It is on Minnesota. It's on Randy Carter, who was holding Matt Nover and then broke free. And so, Indiana's going to get the basketball. On Carter, that'll be his third foul of the ball game. Clem Haskins makes the change quickly. Nine turnovers down by Minnesota. And you can see the frustration building for this Gopher ball club. Here comes Greg Graham. Graham across the timeline, moves it toward the right, pulls it to the wing, drives it baseline, pulls up, can't take the shot, bounces to Pat Graham. He drives, takes it inside, scoop shot, he got it! Pat Graham with an incredible move for his ninth point. 54-41. Man, has he been something today. Outside pass, thrown it away by Calvert. Cheney slows it down. Calvert Cheney with a great defensive play. Indiana by 13. Bailey at the other end. Damon drives. Gives it up to Pat Graham. Three on the way again. Off the rim, no. Nate Thompson with the rebound. Here come the Gophers. Four on two. Pass to McDonald. He fires the jump shot. Got it. Ariel McDonald, seven point. 54-43. 14-20 on the clock. Brian Evans getting set to check in for Indiana at the next opportunity. Here's Greg Graham on the dribble, top of the key, and a whistle, and we get another foul. Jason Walton will get nailed on this one. Calvert Cheney was trying to break free, and Walton had a hold of him again. Walton picks up his second foul of the ball game, and that is the fourth team foul against Minnesota, make it the fifth now. Here's Pat Graham getting a rest now as... Brian Evans returns to the IU lineup. Here's the pass into Calvert. Inside to Brian, and he hits the eight-footer. Brian Evans' first field goal. 56-43, IU on a run. 14 minutes to go. Indiana on defense with a man. Here's the pass left side to Walton. Walton gets it out to Sean Leonard for a three-try. He misses the rebound. Brian Evans, and Evans clears for IU to Greg Graham. Graham works it up the floor. Across the timeline, Greg takes it right side, pulls up, looks in, turns around, bounces it off to Calvert. Calvert fires the 17-footer, scores! Calvert Cheney, his 12th point of the ball game. 58-43 with 13 and a half minutes to go. Indiana with their biggest lead of the contest. Across the timeline, Minnesota's Ariel McDonald, top of the key. Right side pass to Walton. Walton back to McDonald for a three try. Short rebound, Damon Bailey. Up court pass to Greg Graham, an unmolested breakaway slam dunk. Greg Graham's 12 point. 
timeout, Minnesota. The Hoosiers lead it 60 to 43, and everybody on the Indiana bench is up congratulating the players as they come to the sideline. 13.07 to go. We'll be back after the 60 second network timeout. Hi, this is Woodard Scott for True Value. We'd like to wish the Indiana University basketball team, better known as the Hoosiers, a great season. In basketball, the pick and roll is an old yet effective tool. In the workshop, you can also use the pick and roll with a Master Mechanic six-drawer tool setter for just $86.99. It organizes your tools so you can easily pick them. And the sturdy casters make it easy to roll. For personal service and low prices, bring your family to the True Value family of stores. State Farm Homeowners Insurance. Great service makes it a great value. With State Farm, your agent is there to give you good protection at a good price. Your agent is there to back it up with outstanding personal service, too. And when you have a claim, your agent teams up with State Farm claims people to avoid hassles and delays and speed your claim. Great service. It makes State Farm a great homeowner's insurance value. And like a good neighbor, State Farm... Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. You're listening to 1550 AM WCBL and 103.9 FM WIMC Crawfordsville. Well, back once again at Williams Arena, where Indiana is leading by 17, 60 to 43. They're on a 20, what, 23 to 4 run? 21, 21 to 4 right now, and they've hit 10 out of 12 this half. That's 83 percent. Minnesota just two of nine this half. Indiana opened the half with 11 straight points, and it's been all Hoosiers so far in this half. This has been some kind of gutty performance. And probably as hostile a bit as Indiana has seen this year. The Hoosiers by 17, Minnesota ball. Ariel McDonald across the timeline. Goes right side. The pass to Bashan Leonard. He takes it back top of the key on the dribble and fires it up inside. It goes to Walton, who pumps the jumper and got it. Jason Walton bangs home his second field goal, his fourth point. Indiana's Gray Graham brings it down. Pat Graham, Calvert Cheney. And Greg Graham of all scored three field goals in the second half. Here's Greg in backcourt on a double team, looks for help, bounces it out of trouble to Damon Bailey, who takes it right side, gives it to Calvert. Calvert fakes the three. He'll bring it back out of the wing. Now, bounces off to Greg Graham. Graham looks inside, starts at left, stops. And having trouble, bounces to Brian Evans. Evans fakes, lobs it back out to Greg. Greg fakes it left, goes back to Evans in the corner. A three on the way. It's off the rim, no. Rebound, Matt over for IU, and he kicks it out to Calvert Cheney, to Greg Graham. Now at the Bailey. <laughs> Bailey circles. Bailey gives it off to Greg Graham on the left side. Greg looks in. Bounces to Nover. Nover clears to Bailey. Bailey pops it off to Calvert. He fires up a bomb, and it's no good. The rebound, and a foul on Matt Nover. Nover picks up his second foul of the ball game. He was on the back of a Sean Leonard. The Hoosiers lead by 15, 60 to 45, but Minnesota's trying to make a little bit of a run here to get back in the contest. Indiana needs a stop and another basket to take the crowd out of it. 11.46 to go. Across the timeline, McDonald. Right side pass comes off to Dana Jackson. He gets it out to Walton. Walton looks inside. Dribbles it left, gives to McDonald. McDonald on the wing, looks inside again, can't find anybody, finally goes to Leonard down low on the baseline. Leonard on the wing, lets a three fly, got it. Man, he let that one go in a hurry, that's his first point for the second half, and that's his third three of the ball game. A big bucket there for Minnesota. He gets the crowd back into it, Indiana by 12, 60-48. Bailey to Gray Graham. Graham on the wing, zone being used by Minnesota. Outlet goes to Bailey. Bailey now to Nover. Nover turns around and gives it off to Bailey. Damon down low. Lost the handle. Ball batted away, and Minnesota's got it. Up the floor come the Gophers. Ariel McDonald drives it inside, kicks it out to Bashan Leonard for a three, and in and out, and he got the roll. It bounced around and went in. He's got 21, and the lead's back down to single digits, 60 to 51. And now the crowd is really back into it. Nine-point Indiana lead. 
Bounce pass to Bailey. Bailey back to Greg Graham. Right side to Brian Evans. Back out to Graham. Graham now with the ball. Looks for help. Clears to Bailey. Bailey turns around. Back to Greg Graham. A three on the way. He got it! Greg Graham banks home a big three. He's got 15 points now. The Hoosiers are back on top by 12. 63-51. 10.08 to go. Here's McDonald on the right wing. Takes it back inside the lane. Jump shot is up and in. McDonald's got his nice point. 63-52. Indiana's lead at 10. 9.52 left. Bounce pass to Calvert. Calvert inside to Nover. Nover puts it up and scores! Matt Nover with his 13th point of the ball game. And Indiana continues to counter every drive by Minnesota. 65-53. Inside 9.40. Right side pass comes to Jackson, off to Ariel McDonald on the wing. McDonald slides it back left. Works on Bailey, slides it right to the baseline. Bounces it inside to Vashon Leonard, and he walked. They're going to call a push. Brian Evans will get nailed on it. Brian Evans called for the foul. That will be his third of the ball game. That is the fifth foul called on Indiana in the second half. Both teams have now been whistled for five team fouls. Minnesota will have the ball out of bounds. Inbounding is Leonard. Leonard lobs it in. It's batted by Tubbs, but it's picked up by McDonald. McDonald right to Leonard. Another three. No good this time of the rebound. Matt Nover saves it to Greg Graham. Nice play by Matt Nover. The Minnesota fans, here's a three by Bailey. Oh, he hit it! That ball went in from about 24 feet away. Bailey's first basket of the second half. It's a tray, and the Hoosiers lead is 15 again. 68-53. Left side pass, Leonard goes to Tubbs. Tubbs on the wing, back to Leonard. Leonard now on the dribble. Takes it back outside, top of the key. Drives it off to McDonald. McDonald. Circles it left. He pulls up and fires a 20-footer. It's no good to the rebound. Brian Evans for IU. Now up the floor, Bailey. Damon drives it left side. All the way inside to Nover. Puts it up. No good. But a, and it is pulled out of there by Zigamazavo. Now McDonald. Top of the key. Again, right it goes. Out of bounds. And Greg Graham touched it last. It'll belong to Minnesota. Greg is saying, no, I didn't. But the official didn't buy it. Well, that shot a moment ago by Nover was the first one he's missed today. He had some pressure inside. Looked like he might have got hit, but there was no call. Nate Tubbs will inbound now. He gets it to Zigamazabo, who goes outside to McDonald. The Hoosiers lead is at 15 with 8.18 to go. Now off the Leonard. Another three. Got it. The Sean Leonard has hit three three-pointers in a row. 24 points for him at 68-56. 8.05 to go. Bailey with the ball. Outside pass to Greg Graham. Graham goes to Brian Evans. Evans drives in the lane, pulls up, fires, and missed it. The rebound comes off to Zigamazabo. Up the floor, across the timeline. McDonald takes it right to Tubbs. Tubbs bounces back to McDonald for a three try. Got it. That's the fourth straight three that Minnesota's hit. McDonald has got 12. That's his second three of the ball game, and it's 68-59, and again we're inside 10 points. Here's Greg Graham. Spin, backcourt. Slides it right. Comes back left. Now Graham almost lost it, got it back. Greg Graham moves it to the right side. Greg looks it in. Tries to find Bailey, does. Damon turns, fakes, drives in, puts the shot up, and missed it, but a foul. Bailey draws the foul. He'll go to the line. Pat Graham is going to check in for IU. 68-59. The Hoosiers lead by nine with 7-13 left. Pat Graham will check in. Pat will come in for Brian Evans, whose last shot down the floor, Max, was reminiscent of what he took a couple of ball games back when Indiana really didn't need that kind of a play. Well, he, t- he tends to do that a little bit. That'll come, I think, with a little maturity, but it certainly came at an inappropriate time just a moment ago as Minnesota really is lighting them up now. They have. Uh, this is the first time Indiana's gone to the line here in the second half at all. Bailey at the stripe with 10 points. He fires the free one. Good. Damon has his 11th point of the ball game. He'll have one more shot coming. 
It's 69-59. The Hoosier lead is at 10. 7-13 to go. And Ryan Wolf is coming in for Minnesota. Wolf is going to replace Dana Jackson. So that's three three-point shooters they've now got in the ballgame along with Colander and Carter. Colander, of course, playing with four fouls. Carter with three. Bailey will have a chance to take the lead up to 11 if he can connect on his second shot. He has 11 points now in the ballgame. Bailey eyes, flies, and hits. 12 now for Damon. And time is called with 7.13 left. It's Indiana. 70, Minnesota, 59, 7.13 to go. Back after the 60-second break. This is a network timeout. I nestled into booth 12 at Waffle House when I heard that... May I help you? ...voice. There stood the most pleasant, caring... Nice haircut. ...person I'd ever met. Over the next hour, we shared... I'd recommend... ...many thoughts... Coffee? ...about life. You see, I had reached... Dessert? Fishing tips? The service zone. If we could be open more than day and night, we would. We're more than lip service. We're a Waffle House. I moved to booth 11. Oh, miss... If your car does this, pick up the nearest phone and do this. That's 1-800-LET-NAPA. It's your direct line to the location of the nearest NAPA store. That's where you get high-quality parts plus the advice you need from the NAPA professionals. So when you need to hear this, just remember to do this. 1-800-LET-NAPA. NAPA, because there are no unimportant parts. Back once again at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Indiana 70, Minnesota 59. As the Hoosiers lead by 11. And Max, they simply need to hold on here. But of course, you'd like to see them do a little more than just hold on. Well, that's right. I thought they tried to get uh, using up the clock a little bit a while ago when they were up by 17. And I thought that gave Minnesota the opportunity really to start getting back into this thing. Minnesota coming into this game is hitting only 35% or 30, yeah, 35% of its three-point shots. It has hit four out of seven this half. And just like Indiana did in the first half, that's what's keeping them in it right now. For the half, Indiana is 13 of 19 from the field. They were 12, 10 of their first 12. Minnesota now was, was 2 of 11 at one point, is now 8 of 17. Pat Graham is in for Brian Evans, as we told you earlier. It's Nover, Cheney, Pat Graham, Damon Bailey, and Gray Graham, the lineup for IU. Minnesota has Ryan Wolf, Ariel McDonald, with Sean Leonard, three three-point shooters in there, along with Colander and Carter. Backcourt dribble. This is Ariel McDonald, right side pass to Carter on the wing. Carter holds, takes it outside to Tubbs. He gives it left side, or Tubbs is in the ballgame, rather. Here's Ryan Wolf back out to Tubbs. A three on the way by Nate Tubbs. He got it. Nate Tubbs is not known for his three-point shooting, but he just hit his first of the ball game, and it's an eight-point contest. 70-62. Bailey to Gray Graham. Graham looks inside. Can't find Calvert. Goes outside to Pat Graham. Now left side to Bailey. Damon looks down low. Can't find Gray Graham. Does now. Puts it up inside. Missed the shot. Randy Carter with a rebound. Minnesota down by eight with 6.25 left. And the ball, McDonald to Ryan Wolf. Right side pass comes to Carter on the wing. Carter outside to Colander. He gives to McDonald. McDonald drives it inside, pulls up, shoots, and missed it, but a foul. Damon Bailey will get nailed on his third of the ball game. So Bailey picks up number three. Going to the stripe now for Minnesota will be Ariel McDonald. McDonald has been a big factor in the second half with four field goals, one of them a three. And he now has 12 points in this ballgame. He's a good free throw shooter, 71% on the year. His first trip to the line this afternoon. 6-12 left. The Hoosiers lead by eight, but McDonald with the clock stop can cut it down to six with both shots falling. And the first one does. 13 now for McDonald. Indiana has had a couple of sizable leads here in the second half, but Minnesota just keeps battling back. The second one is also good. 14 for McDonald. The Gophers are down six. Indiana ball. Full court pressure. Calvert gives to Bailey. Bailey now. Slides it up court. He's in some trouble. Finally carries to Pat Graham across the timeline to Greg Graham. Down low to Nover. Up and a reverse lamp is good. Man, Nover's got 15. The Hoosiers broke the press nicely at 72-64. Now McDonald. 
Ariel McDonald against Greg Graham. Bounces to Randy Carter. Left right wing. Back to McDonald on the wing. He slides it back outside. Gives it off to Colander. He goes baseline. Cut off. Gives it out to McDonald. McDonald on the right wing. Gives it inside to Carter. Carter turns around on Nover. Puts it up and got it. Randy Carter has his 13th point. 72-66. Six-point ball game, 5.25 left. Damon Bailey across the timeline. Bailey to the wing. Drives, looks inside, gets it into Greg Graham, puts it up and scores! Greg Graham, another quick move to the hole. They're posting up Ryan Wolf. 17 for Greg Graham. 74-66. Left side, Nate Tubbs on the wing. He holds, looks in for Colander. Tubbs gives the Wolf on the baseline. Down low it comes to Colander. A whistle, and we get a foul on Pat Graham. Pat Graham is going to get nailed on this one. That'll be his second, I believe, in the ballgame, or third. It is his third. So three now on Pat. I was looking at Pat Knight. That's why I circled the wrong one. Pat Graham has three personals now, and Chad Colander goes to the line. Colander has just two points in the ball game, both on free throws, but he is just two or four from the strike. He has a one and one situation here. Indiana nailed for their 17th foul as Colander eyes the attempt. It's in the air and it is short and no good. The rebound batted away by Cheney to Gray Graham. Indiana with an eight point lead, a chance to take it double figures again. Bailey across the timeline. Damon with it, drives it right side, pulls up on the wing, looks for Calvert, gets it to him, he lost the ball. Here's Dave Tubbs on a break. Down the floor, Tubbs driving it off to Carter. Carter puts it up and scores. 15 for Carter. Minnesota has cut it to six again. 74-68. Gray Graham in backcourt. 425 left. Gray Graham directing traffic, slides it right. Wanting to get the offense moving now is Bob Knight. Bailey gets it to Calvert Cheney. Down low, Calvert drives, puts it up. Parsley block shot. Pulled out of there by Minnesota. Nate Tubbs has got it. And the Gophers can take it down inside four points or two four points if they hit a bucket here. If they hit a three, it's the three points. Four minutes to go. Carter, left wing holds. Lobs it into Colander. Batted away by Knight. A Patrick... Graham and picked up by Bailey. What a defensive play. Here's Bailey driving baseline. Pulls it back out. Damon gives the Calvert. Back off to Damon. Bob Knight wants the triangle run. Here's Greg Graham. Graham drives it left. Pulls it back out against Rashawn Leonard. Leonard's replaced Ryan Wolf. Now Greg Graham is in trouble. Finally gets it to Calvert Chaney. Chaney baseline. He'll pull it back out to Pat Graham. Pat holds on the wing. Down low to Calvert again inside. Down into Matt Nover. Puts it up and he's fouled. Ariel McDonald will be called for the personal. That'll be his second. Six-point ball game. Indiana 74. Minnesota 68 with 3.20 to go. What a contest this has been. Well, Indiana has been great at the line this afternoon. They're 14 of 16, but these free throws now during this last three minutes and 20 seconds are so important as we all know what happened in the three losses Indiana's had. Nover with two coming. The first in the air. He got it. Matt Nover is perfect on the day from the line. He's got 16 points now in this ball game, and he's six of six from the stripe. One more shot coming to take the lead back up to eight. It's in the air, and it is good. And we got a whistle. What's this, a foul on Calvert? The shot counts, 17 on Nover, but I think Chaney just got nailed on a pushing foul. So with 3.20 to go, Minnesota goes to the line with a one and one. And it looks like Ariel McDonald's gonna go to the strike. Calvert Cheney was called for the foul. That is his third of the ballgame. 76-68. Indiana by eight. 320 left. And to the free throw stripe will be Minnesota. Now, will it be Colander? Apparently, Colander will go to the line. So Colander's at the line for a one and one. He missed his previous attempt at a one and one. He is just two out of five for the afternoon. 
He eyes the attempt. It's in the air. It is short. No good. And it comes off the mat and over. It hung on the rim for a second. I thought maybe Matt might touch it before it came off the rim. He didn't. Indiana's got it with an eight-point lead, and Graham, Pat with it in backcourt. Down low to Matt Nover, who turns around, brings it back outside to Pat Graham. Pat Graham now. In backcourt, drives it right wing to Damon Bailey. Down low to Calvert, the ball batted out of bounds, and it belonged to IU. Nate Tubbs touched it last. And we're going to have a timeout. The score with 2.58 to go. Indiana 76, Minnesota 68. We'll be back after the 60-second break. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. When I bite into your peppermint patty, I... I get the sensation. And when I take another bite... York Peppermint Patty, dark chocolate, cool mint. Get the sensation. I knew it was going to be a bad day at school because it was always a bad day at school. And I just wanted to pull my covers over my head and make school go away. This is Sandy Duncan with a Sylvan success story every parent should hear. Sylvan has just done wonders for her. Now Tara can't wait to get out the door to go to school. I used to get these and Fs, and now I get A's and B's, and I'm proud of it. Sylvan Learning Center can boost your child's grades and self-esteem. So call your local center now, 1-800-EDUCATE. That's 1-800-EDUCATE. Well, back once again at Williams Arena, where Indiana is holding on to an eight-point lead, 76-68 the score, 258 remaining in this contest. It has been a tough battle here this afternoon at Williams Arena. The Hoosier ball club, I think, has played very, very well. Well, both teams have really lit it up here in the second half. Indiana's shooting 65% on 15 of 23. Minnesota's shooting 55% on 11 of 20. The Graham boys are the ones who have taken care of Indiana as Greg Graham has hit five out of six in this half. Pat Graham has hit three out of four. So both of those have played significant roles here. Ba Bailey with seven assists already in this game. Greg Graham with five assists for the game now. Indiana shooting 57% and Minnesota 49.9. Indiana will have the ball inbounded underneath their own hoop. And Damon Bailey will be the trigger man of the pass in. Damon looks, holds, bounces into Greg Graham who kicks it outside to Pat Graham and Pat in backcourt. Pat. Moves it left, comes back to the right. Looks down low, having some trouble. Finally gets it to Damon Bailey. Bailey on the dribble against McDonald. Bailey drives it right side, pulls up, and he's fouled from behind by McDonald. Ariel McDonald has his third personal foul. It puts Damon Bailey at the line. Bailey has 12 points in the ball game. Damon has hit four out of four from the strike. So the Hoosiers have maintained their hot shooting from the line today, 16 out of 18 for the ball game, and 5 of 5 in the second half as Bailey has two shots coming. The first one is in the air, and it is good. Damon Bailey has got his 13th point of the afternoon. He's got one more shot coming. If he hits this one, he takes it back up to a 10-point Indiana lead with 2.41 to go. He eyes, he flies, and he didn't get the roll. The rebound comes off the Colander. Colander gives it to McDonald. It's a nine-point ball game. McDonald, top of the key. Left side pass to Leonard for a three try, and in and out, no. And the rebound inside to Tubbs, back up, and he got it. Nate Tubbs scores his seventh point. Here's Bailey with the ball. 77-70 score, 2.20 to go. Bailey brings it up the court across the timeline. A triple team, and gets it off to Greg Graham. Graham pulls it back out to Pat Graham, and Indiana's going to work some clock. Pat Graham on the dribble, bounces to Greg Graham left side of the key. Greg on the wing, looks low for Calvert, brings it back out to Damon. Damon Bailey to Pat Graham. Pat against Ariel McDonald, goes to Greg Graham with a pass. Greg holds, gives to Calvert Shady. Left side to Pat Graham. Pat Graham to Damon. Inside, pulls up, fires a fadeaway off the glass, no good, and the rebound to Colander. And it's stolen away by Calvert, picked up by Damon, and out of bounds to Minnesota. So the Hoosiers trying to save it, give it up with a minute 41 to go, and they lead by seven. 
Nate Tubbs will inbound. Tubbs gets it in to Ariel McDonald. The Gophers are alive. McDonald starts it left, comes back right. Looks, gives the ball to Tubbs. He fires a three, and it is no good. An air ball. Rebound comes off to Nover. And whistle and a foul. Randy Carter will be nailed in his fourth foul, and Matt Nover will go to the line. Nate Tubbs went to the well maybe one too many times, Max, for that three-point try as he missed that one badly. Well, he's been hitting fairly well in Big Ten play on three-point shots. He's hit 40% for the season, 37%. He didn't even take a shot in that first game. Not a free throw, not a field goal attempt, anything. But here this afternoon, he's three for six overall. Going to the line will be Matt Nover, who this year has struggled and struggled and struggled from the line, hitting just 50% for the season. But today he has been perfect. Actually, 50% for the Big Ten campaign. Nover flies it in the air and off the rim, no. And the rebound comes to Minnesota. Off the claw quickly. Here they come, McDonald in the lane, gets it out to Carter, Carter gets back to McDonald, a three on the way, and it is in and out, no good, and the rebound knocked away from Nover, the Colander batted away in a foul. And we got a Minnesota player hurt on the floor. It is Vashon Leonard, and he is writhing in pain. He turns an ankle, it would appear. Todd Leary is getting set to check in for IU. The foul call, I believe, was on Greg Graham. The Hoosiers with a seven-point lead, 1.14 to go, trying to hang on here at Williams Arena. It has been a tussle. Matt Nover's the guy going to go to the sidelines. Bob Knight says, Matt, you did the job all day on the free throws until that last one. It's time to put everybody that can hit them in there or hit them consistently. And Todd Leary, Max, hasn't missed this year, 19 and 19. You're right about that. And, of course, that's a real key. Obviously, Indiana's going to be shooting foul shots here for the remainder of this ball game. I'd be surprised unless it's a wide-open shot that they even take a field goal attempt. Right, well, right now, Adon is three possessions for uh, Minnesota, seven-point lead, two three-pointers, and something else to even catch Indiana. So Indiana with the upper hand, but it's still a tight game. Clem Haskins is out there in the middle of the huddle with his basketball team right at the free-throw lane as they work on Vashon Leonard. Leonard obviously turned an ankle and turned it pretty strongly. Uh, he's trying to get up right now. And Ryan Wolf, I believe, has checked in to replace Leonard. Now he's leaning over, and it would appear that he's not as seriously injured as it first looked, but apparently it's a, it's a turned ankle of some kind. Well, he's hit three out of six three-point shots here in the second half. He hit uh, one or two, make that two out of four in the first half. They help him to his feet. He's still not walking yet. With Sean Leonard with 24 points in the ball game, and he's trying to walk it off. He's going to the sideline, but he's walking gingerly, but not really lifting. And the crowd gives him a big ovation. 1.14 to go. The Hoosiers are up seven, but again, it'll be Minnesota free throws coming here. The foul call was on Greg Graham. That was his first foul of this contest. And let's see who's going to shoot him. Will it be Ariel McDonald? It appears Ariel McDonald's going to the line. I'm not sure the officials even know who it was, and Bob Knight uh, doesn't think that's who it was. McDonald took the shot. Now the officials coming to the sideline. Is it Randy Carter going to the stripe? I think so. Well, we'll wait and see. Colander comes Colander. back in. Don't bring him in. He's the one who got fouled. Yeah, Bob Knight is saying, come on, fellas, let's get it straight. You know, they can actually call you for a technical foul if you try to uh, fool the officials. I'm not sure that's what their attempt was, but they had Cole Anders sitting on the bench. Well, of course, the, the officials have got to be smart enough to catch it, which uh, puts another play on it. So Cole Anders is the man going to the line. They had Ariel McDonald up there at one point. Here we go. One and one. McDonald fire up. Cole Anders fires it up, and he hits it. So Colander has his third point of the ball game. He was two for four from the line of the first half, and to that free throw was 0 for two in the second half. He fires the second one, and it is short, and the rebound comes to Calvert. 
Cheney trying to take it out of trouble. It's ripped free, and a foul call is on Nate Tubbs. Tubbs picks up his first foul of the ball game. And the Hoosiers' Calvert Cheney will go to the line as Madden Over will re-enter the ball game now as Todd Leary will go to the sidelines. And that, of course, defensive purposes for Indiana. So the Hoosiers have a chance with the clock stopped at 111 to take the lead back up to eight points if he connects on both. Calvert Cheney with 12 points in the ball game today, and he has not been to the stripe again, Max. He has not been to the stripe very much in the last three or four games, and that has really been a big difference. Two shots coming to Calvert. That's the 10th team foul in Minnesota. Calvert flies it in the air, and he got it. Cheney now has 13 points, and he has one more opportunity coming. And, of course, he continues to zero in on the career scoring leadership at Indiana, and he drills the second one for his 14. He is now just six shy of tying Steve Olfer. Across the timeline, Indiana leads by eight as Pat Graham kicks it out of bounds, and it belongs to Minnesota. 108 left. Gopher ball, Jason Walton will trigger the inbounds pass. Walton looks, slaps it one time, holds high, and finally gets it into Ariel McDonald, who drives it in the lane. We got a foul call on Greg Graham. Greg Graham just picked up his second personal. So Graham has called for his second foul. Bob Knight did not want to see that foul committed. Ariel McDonald will go to the line, and he has had himself a fine afternoon scoring-wise with 14 points and a perfect 2 of 2 from the line. That was his last two shots, or last two points scored. Again, Leary will check in for Indiana, and Matt Nover will go to the sideline. We're not getting a lot of time run off the clock here, Max. Too much cl stopped clock uh, and chances for both teams to score with it stopped. And here's McDonald rattling it home. That's his 15th point of the day. He'll have one more opportunity. He can take the lead right back down to six if he converts here. We've had three sets of free throw shots here in nine seconds. And he got them both. 16 for McDonald. The Hoosiers ball. Pat Graham inbounds to Greg Graham. And Greg is fouled by Nate Tubbs. And we're down to 103. So only a two or three more seconds ticked off. Nate Tubbs called for that foul, I believe. That'll be his second. And they'll go to the other end, and now it'll be Pat Graham going to the line. Pat, a 70% shooter for the season to date. But he gets two shots to go. Two shots here. 79-73. Greg Graham will be the guy at the line, not Pat Graham. My apology. And Greg Graham grills it. Greg Graham has his 18th point of the afternoon. He is now... Four out of five from the line. He has one more shot coming. And the second one is also good. He's got 19 of the Hoosiers now leaded by eight again, 81-73. Here comes McDonald. We're inside a minute. McDonald top of the key to Carter. Down to the corner to Tubbs. A three on the way. Air ball. Batted out of bounds. It'll belong to Minnesota. Go for ball. They'll get another crack at it. Ryan Wolf will trigger it in. 53 seconds left. The inbound comes to McDonald. McDonald drives it, spins, turns, fires it up, and missed it. The rebound batted away. Here's Bailey going for it, and he is fouled. Damon Bailey gets nailed by Ryan Wolf. Ryan Wolf had an arm on his shoulder, and Ryan Wolf gets nailed for the personal. That'll be his second of the ball game, and Damon Bailey will go back to the free throw line. Bailey with 13 this afternoon. And he can take it up to a 10-point lead. 45 Indiana, seconds left. Indiana 21 of 25 from the foul line. Boy, are they important when you hit those free throws. Bailey at the line. Flies this one in the air and got it. Damon's got his 14th point of the afternoon. That's not his best effort of the year, but he has played well off the bench today. And he fires number two around, and it drops through, and Bailey got them both. He's got 15, and the Hoosiers lead it by 10. We're down to 42 seconds, and the crowd is filing out of here. Here's Walton driving, scooping, and missing. Rebound inside, battled away, and it's picked up by Greg Graham. Graham takes it out to Bailey, and they got an easy breakaway layup. Damon slams it. Bailey, 16 points. 28 seconds left, and Indiana by 12. Here the other way, Tubbs shoots it up and missed it. Rebound off of Tubbs out of bounds to Indiana. 
So the Hoosiers are going to go out of Williams Arena this afternoon with another win. And what a dissolution crowd this is as they file to the entrances at Williams Arena. The Hoosiers will have a victory here today. They lead by 12, and the Gophers now aren't even putting on full court pressure. Bailey will walk it up. Back off to Calvert Chaney across the timeline. Calvert in backcourt gives it off to Pat Graham. Pat now dribbles it once, bounces back to Calvert. Calvert is fouled, and Jason Walton is the guy who got him. So Chaney will go to the stripe with 14. Back into the ball game as Ariel McDonald goes to the sideline. Kevin Baker, a first-time player this afternoon, checks in. And now here comes another one, Hosea Crittenden, in for the first time. So Bob Knight's Indiana Ball Club is racking up a victory here today at Williams Arena. A lot of the Hoosier fans thought this one would be impossible to get, especially in lieu of the loss to Ohio State on Tuesday. But this Indiana basketball team has gutted another one out. Calvert Chaney with 14 at the line. Flies the free one good. He's got 15 now. Chaney with his 15th point of the day. And Indiana is going to win walking away on this one. Chaney, second toss. No good. It rims out. It comes off to Baker. Down the floor with the ball as Kevin Baker drives it all the way. Scoops it up and in. That's his first two. And the clock runs out and the Hoosiers have won a big one here today at Williams Arena in Minnesota as Indiana beats the Golden Gophers 86-75 to for their 14th Big Ten win of the season. And this Indiana group of players is loving every second of this one. IU triumphant over Minnesota this afternoon here in Williams Arena, 86-75. We'll recap it for you when we come back after the 60-second network timeout. The game's heating up, Bob. Look at that. I don't believe it, Bob. The coach is bringing in a Canon NP6060 from Copyright. A Canon NP6060, Bob. The copier that shoots a copy a second. Holds 6,100 sheets of paper. And has copyright's exclusive total lifetime coverage. With service in four hours or they pay you. And a lifetime money-back guarantee. No wonder copyright's Indiana's biggest. Copyright. The smart choice. That's the Canon NP6060. From Copyright. Put it on your office team. Call Copyright. And do it today, if not sooner. University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening. Well, back once again at Williams Arena in Minneapolis where the Saptonal, the Hoosiers, take home their 25th victory of the season against three defeats and now stand 14-1 and in Big Ten Conference play with just three conference ball games remaining. Minnesota today... 15 and 9 after this contest loss, and they are now 7 and 8 as far as the Big Ten season is concerned. The final was 86 to 75, Indiana. It was not easy, but Indiana was able to take it away from Minnesota in the second half when they struggled just to get it to even at the break 39 39. And then they rode to a hot second half start, got a 17 point lead at one point. But Minnesota never gave up. They continued to fight back, got it down to six, I believe, on several occasions. But Indiana able to hold off Minnesota for a big, big triumph here this afternoon. Let's look at the individual scoring in this ballgame. First of all, for the Golden Gophers, led by Bashan Leonard, who fired up 24 points today, including five three-point field goals. Also in double figures were Ariel McDonald, who had 16 points, and 13 of those were scored in the second half. Randy Carter contributed 15. He had 11 points in the first half, but just two buckets in the second half for his 15 total. Then down the list, Nate Tubbs had seven points, the Fort Wayne, Indiana product. Four points for Ernest Zigamazabo. Jason Walton had four this afternoon. Three for Chad Colander. Two for Kevin Baker. And Ryan Wolf, Kevin Baker, and Hosea Crittenden all played but did not score. So Minnesota with three players in double figures, led by Bashan Leonard's 24, 16 for Ariel McDonald, and 15 for Randy Carter. For Indiana this afternoon, a solid performance for this Hoosier ball club, and the man who led them, 
once again for the third time I believe in three straight ball games it was Greg Graham with 19 points in this afternoon's contest to lead the Hoosiers Madden over had 17 Damon Bailey had 16 Calvert Cheney had 15 Pat Graham was solid today with a nine-point effort, especially with three big buckets early on in that strong second-half start. He got three key buckets that really keyed this uh, big start in the second half for IU. Six points for Todd Leary, two points for Brian Evans, one for Pat Knight, Chris Reynolds, the lone Hoosier, not to score in this ball game this afternoon. So again, Indiana had four players in double digits. Greg Graham's 19, 17 for Matt Nover, 16 for Damon Bailey, and Calvert Cheney with 15. We'll be back to look at the team statistics on this contest right after we pause for the 60-second timeout. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. Across America, Radio Shack is the place to go for great values in telephones and accessories. Now through Sunday, you'll find terrific deals like a cordless phone with noise-free circuitry so clear it rivals corded phones. Now half price at $49.95. Our dual cassette entering machine is 40% off at $39.95. Two cassettes mean no waiting before leaving a message. Two great products, four big days, one big sale. Offer good through Sunday at participating stores and dealers. Dear Hooked on Phonics, I've taught first grade for more than 15 years, and I've had a lot of success with my classes in the past. This year, I brought Hooked on Phonics into my classroom, and I can honestly say that because of Hooked on Phonics, I have the best reading and writing first grade students I've ever taught. Thanks to Hooked on Phonics, my students are Hooked on Reading. Signed, W.C., Fort Huachuca, Arizona. For Hooked on Phonics plus SRA Reading Laboratories, call 1-800-ABCDEFG. It's nothing serious. Well, back once again at Williams Arena, where Indiana this afternoon toughs out an 86-75 win over the Minnesota Golden Gophers to go 25-3 in the season and 14-1 and in the Big Ten with three ball games to go. And Max, right now, Indiana returns to the driver's seat of this conference race. Well, they really do now, Don. All they've got to do now is win two home games, and they've got the championship. So no matter what Michigan or Illinois does during the remainder of their games, and what a sweet thing that would be for Indiana to say, clinch the championship on the final game of the home season, a time when Indiana salutes its senior players. So that would certainly be a very nice evening for uh, Indiana should it occur at that time. Well, here are the statistics uh, minus the uh, rebounds, which I don't quite have figured up yet. But at any rate, uh, in the first half, Indiana shot an even 50% on 11 of 22. For the second half, they were even better, 16 of 26 for 61.5%, giving them a game total of 27 of 48, 56.2. That is outstanding shooting. Remember, this is the ball club, but Indiana shot only 44% against Minnesota in that first game. The Gophers, on the other hand, hit 14 of 31 in the first half, 45%. They were 13 of 29 in the second half, 44.8, giving them a game total of 27 of 59, 45.7%. Both teams shot very well on three-point shots. Indiana in the first half, five of seven. The second half, three of seven. For the game, they were eight of 14, 57.1%. For Minnesota in the first half, they were three of four. In the second half, they were five of three, or excuse me, five of 13 for the game. They finish up eight of 17, 47%, and that's certainly better than they shoot most of the season long. For uh, free throws, Indiana once again with an outstanding job hitting on 12 of 14 in the first half, 12 of 15 in the second half. 24 of 29 for the game, giving him a total of 80 or a percentage of 82.7. That's outstanding shooting. Minnesota finishes. They had eight of 11 first half, only five of eight in the second half, giving them a total of 13 of 19, 68.4 turnovers in this game. Indiana turned it over eight times in the first half, but I only had them for a couple of turnovers in the second half. All the official score now comes along and has given them three turnovers, so they finish up 11 for the game, and Minnesota also turns, up, uh, turns it over for 11 times. Rebounding today, Indiana finishes losing the rebounding battle 34-28, to but it uh, pretty much evened out after the first five minutes. Minnesota went up by...
won margin early on, but Indiana then came back to hold its own as the rest of the game progressed. Matt Dover was the leading Indiana rebounder with nine. Calbert Chaney had five. For the Minnesota Golden Gophers, Randy Carter had 11 rebounds to lead his ball club with Tubbs and Colander, each with six rebounds. The uh, assist this afternoon, Damon Bailey won again with a good outstanding day. He leads Indiana and today he had six assists. Greg Graham had a total of four. Calvert Cheney had four steals in this ball game, the only four that Indiana had. Leonard stole three for Minnesota to lead the Gophers in that department. Well, Indiana fell behind by a total of six points in the first half. That was the biggest lead Minnesota had all day long. They dropped back when it was 12 to six. Indiana had two one-point leads in this first half, 16 to 15, and again at 18 to 17. Indiana then finally tied the game up at 39 to 39 on a couple of free throws with nine seconds left. And in the second half, Indiana went on 11 straight points to start the second half. They hit 10 out of their first 12 shots, and they, at, during that period of time, the first seven minutes, they won on a 21 to four margin, and they eventually led by their largest lead, 17 points. That one came at 60 to 43 at the 1307 mark, and then Minnesota went on a barrage, hitting one, two, three, four, five three-point plays out of six for the uh, to get back to within six, but Indiana kept withstanding, shot nothing but free throws in the last three minutes, and were fortunate enough to hit most of them, and they win it here this afternoon, 86 to 75, an 11 point win. Well, a big win for Indiana in so many ways, but none more important than the fact that it puts them in the driver's seat for the Big Ten title once again after losing on Tuesday to Ohio State, and it does so. Uh, it also shows, I think, Max, that this team has a lot of character uh, going for it and a lot of heart coming up here. And the way this uh, ball game was built today by the media here, by the Minnesota Ball Club themselves, uh, you would have thought that this was going to be for the national championship and there was no way they were going to be denied. The Hoosiers denied them here this afternoon. I think the other thing, Don, it gives them a lot of confidence. I think they were just a little shaky after losing Henderson. Uh, I'm sure they weren't quite sure just how kind of a ball club they might be, but after the winning as they have done today, they can say we're a pretty good basketball team. Well, Minnesota now stands 15 and 9. They are 7 and 8 in Big Ten play. The Hoosiers 25 and 3 and now 14 and 1 in the conference. The final again 86-75 IU over Minnesota. Today's ball game brought to you in part by Indiana Gas for efficiency, comfort and a cleaner environment. Natural gas your best energy value season after season. By your local Napa Auto Parts store. Napa because there are no unimportant parts. By your local Amoco Soda Care Repair Centers. By the Hoosier Lottery, where you've got to play to win. By State Farm Insurance and the more than 500 State Farm agents throughout Indiana. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By the real estate professionals at the 121 Century 21 offices in Indiana. By True Value Hardware. Got a tough job? You can do it with True Value Hardware Store. Squadron Herbicide. Full of soybean weed control and by Indiana's Rural Electric Cooperatives, consumer-owned for service excellence. Our special thanks to our studio producer, Gary Klein, to our statistician, Greg Elkin. Now this is Don Fisher for Max Gervin, inviting you to stay tuned next for the IU Post Game Show. We'll be rejoining you in just a couple of minutes. So long, everybody. The Bill DeFowl's $6 million tax sales underway. Come in to DeFowl's big truck lot today or tonight. We're open till 9. Take a look at our tough Chevy truck lineup. We're out to make Chevy trucks the best-selling truck line again in 93. And remember, now's the time to buy because we're reducing inventory. With February tax sale discounts, offering truck rebates up to $1,000, making great trade-in deals. Come on out, take a look, take a drive. Make your deal in the truck of your choice. We've got whatever you need in trucks, blazers and vans and we're dealing choose from chevy full-size c and k pickups s10 pickups and two and four-wheel drive s10 blazers and two door and four door custom chevy conversion vans by geneva work vans and more everything everything is on sale new and used we've got great tax rebate deals we're open till nine weeknights till six on saturday and now is the time to say hey that's my chevy my truck. The tax sale's on now at DeFau, serving central Indiana from Lafayette. Cardinal Communications announces free cable TV installation. Sign up for one of our best value packages and save $43 if you act now. Save even more on the monthly bill. Order Premier or Economy Cable and save from $10 to $20 a month off the normal a la carte rates. 
If you've ever thought about getting cable, now is the time. But hurry, offer ends soon. Call Cardinal Communications at 1 800 342 5533. Carpetland USA. Carpetland USA. It's Carpetland's blockbuster anniversary sale and sweepstakes. Dramatic savings on everything and, of course, every carpet completely installed with months. Come in today and find out how you can win $25,000 in prizes. But hurry, this blockbuster sale ends soon at Carpetland, State Road 26 East, Lafayette. Carpetland USA. Carpetland USA. Most companies ask for job applicants with experience. But where do you get experience unless someone gives you a chance? The Air Force, that's where we have jobs available. In fact, if you have high aspirations, the Air Force has more than 200 ways to help you get them off the ground. Find out more from Sergeant Jim Renal at 753-3812. Out of town, call collect. Aim high with the Air Force and WNJY, Joy 103. Once again, this is Don Fisher and Max Gerben with the IU Post Game Show, a review of today's ball game in which Indiana defeats Minnesota 86 to 75 here at Williams Arena in Minneapolis. As always, our post game guest Norm Ellenberger and Norm, congratulations on what we, what I felt, and I think Max did too, very much was a real character afternoon for this <laughs> Indiana basketball team. Well, that's a, that is a great win for the Hoosiers. That uh, uh, the thing belongs pretty much to just exactly what you're talking about and it was exhibited in the last eight minutes of that first half you know we're down three or four maybe down six uh, along in the middle of that half and and uh, uh, the way the game is being played you know it's like a karate workout you know right down through the <laughs> right down through the middle of that lane and uh, we got to have our folks around in the last half and and so you can't you know you can't have Cheney in there you can't have you can't have Evans in there well you didn't want Evans in there for <laughs> the way the way Brian was going for a while but but uh, you know I mean you just we were in foul trouble and um, uh, so but those guys geez, I looked out there and you had to get a scorecard to tell <laughs> tell what what team that was but geez they did a tremendous job they really really did and uh, and then in the second half you just exploded on Minnesota at the start of the second half and that's the kind of start you need yeah, well, and I shouldn't crack down on Brian because he's, you know, this is his first really big, big start. And, uh, you know, like we said, you know, he's still, uh, he carries a towel around so he won't be wet behind the ears and all that stuff. But, you know, he's, he's, he's had some tremendous big baskets for us uh, throughout this season, but he hasn't really started in a game and in a physical game like this. And and uh, he had a little tough time uh, uh, in that, especially in, in the first half. But then when, when we got everybody together and, and uh, I don't know, there was just a real lift in the, in the locker room when when uh, uh, you know all of our starters uh, got down in there and they saw that shoot they were now we had a 20 minute ball game to play and uh geez, we came out ready to go obviously one of the guys that gave you a lift as well was pat graham's play especially in the first uh, 10 minutes of the second half well i would have never th thought that uh, pat would have played 27 minutes you know he's uh, he hadn't played 27 minutes in two years, you know, hardly. <laughs> and, and right. it was, you know, when you think You're about right. it, you know, he, right. we, he was just getting started there in November when he went down again. He didn't play last year at all. So uh, uh, that's uh, <laughs> Coach Knight and I were talking for the ball game and uh, at, 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 the, at the hotel. And if there's anybody, I, I think it's it's the, the greatest kid I've ever known as far as just loving to play the game is Pat Graham. I mean, all of our kids really like to play it. But, but but he really, really needs basketball, and, and that's what makes me so happy that he's got this chance. All right, we'll be back with more on our post game in a moment, but first let's pause for the 60-second timeout. Now, Madam Yolanda will read your palm. Oh, you're a farmer. You grow beans. Soybeans. I feel a powerful presence. Two strong forces working together to solve all your problems. Could it be tricep herbicide? Are your problems broadleaf weeds and grasses? Yes. Like pigweeds, foxtails, cockleburt? Yeah. Ah, then the answer is tricep. Made with scepter, herbicide, and triflan herbicide for the most power you can pack in a jug. All that's in my palm? No, in your tricep brochure. Oh, one more thing. See your cyanamid agri center dealer. Read and follow label directions. University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. 
University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening. Well, back once again at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, where Indiana has won over the Minnesota Golden Gophers today, 86-75. Norm, uh, let's just talk for a couple of moments about uh, the play this afternoon that you had to have uh, in the preparation that was taken by this Minnesota ball club in getting ready for this ball game. Well, they uh, they started uh, uh, talking about this game and pointing for this game on on their way home from the last time we played them. You know, there was. Uh, a lot of things where they'd circle their calendars and you know and, the, and their their governor uh, ran on next year's ticket uh, on on some of his comments and and uh, uh, you know you, you, you come in here and gosh this crowd was ready and and uh, you know we that's a, that's a heck of an onslaught to, to handle uh, as big as they are as athletic as they are and beating bumps on your head on the, on the boards and it just killed us you know they had 12 points and uh, six of them were right just right off the boards so but that that's that's the kind of emotion that you that, that you cannot last if you can, if you can just play a good steady ball game and we did that. Certainly one of the keys as you pointed out earlier was the group of kids that played the final seven and a half minutes of the first half because they just kept it uh, in, a, in a ball game. In other words and they tied it at halftime. You're right and uh, you know we had uh, uh, Larry was in there right and uh, you know he's, he, he can score and and uh, Pat Knight's in there he can pass and Chris. he was really stable and Chris is quick you know it, it wasn't like we had uh, 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 three little puppy dogs and a couple players you know these, these guys have been thrust into the battle before but but uh, uh, you know they've, they've never really had to hold on that long over that long period of time and that was that was really something and then we come out and that was too early to get a 17 point lead you know yeah. I mean uh, we'll take it we didn't want to give any of it back that's for sure but but you just know that 17 points with with uh, what they have 10 11 12 minutes to go right. something like that that's uh, uh, as good a ball club as this is up here uh, you know we, we think uh, we think this is the second best material that we play against in the Big Ten other than of course Michigan and uh, and, and uh, you, you know that they're going to come back on you so was it Norma I made a statement I don't know if you agree or not but uh, it seemed to me after Henderson went down uh, you lost to Ohio State uh, you may be just a little shaky. What do you think yeah. about your team? Yeah. This this has got to help. Man. Well, shaky's a nice word for it. I mean, <laughs> we were just we. It, it's been heavy around our camp for a while. We didn't, you know, a better. We beat a better team today than we play than we played the last time we played that beat us. And uh, uh, you know, we didn't give the effort. You know, and we had, we we just uh, there's just a lot of things. It's a long season and it's a tough season and and the, the psych of a, the psych of a team really gets stretched and really gets tested in a season like this. And uh, and we ours were was really tested. On this but the team now knows they can win the big game without Henderson yeah well that's uh, we we got this one today and uh, we're sure a lot better off uh, now going home uh, with this one with just three left we're what two two up yeah we're two up right. with three left so so we're in pretty good shape one of the uh, final thoughts uh, that you have going coming out of this ball game norm is that now you play Thursday then you don't play till the following Wednesday. Then you don't play till the following Sunday. You get a little bit of rest in between ball games. Well, we're you know we are beat up. You know, Larry Larry is is uh, uh, has been really dragging his leg. And of course, Pat Graham and we can go ad nauseum. You yeah, know, down exactly. through that. Damon Bailey's uh, uh, knee is was, is really he's got a knee and a, and, and a tendon on the and the other foot. And and so it's uh, it'll we'll have some time to rest. Then then on the other hand, you need to play to be sharp. You know, and and it's. Uh, uh, you know Bailey. Bailey, like we, we didn't start Bailey tonight, and uh, it, it, I think it helped him a little bit. You know, he had had a horrible practice yesterday. Uh, I thought he was a spy. You know, I, I, he was the way he was playing. You know, I looked around, see if the doors open, see if Minnesota sent a spy. That's how bad he was at practice. And but uh, he, he woke up and, and gave us a whale of a game. And you know, if you can if you can keep your bench going, and, and certainly the addition of Pat Graham now uh, has got to help us. Oh, no question about it. Norm, we congratulate you again on the victory this afternoon and uh, wish you the best uh, as this ball club continues down the three ball games left in the Big Ten race. Yeah, well, it's, uh, when is it? <laughs> when's, when's Northwestern? Wednesday? Next thir This Next coming Thursday. Thursday. When's our day off? Tomorrow? Uh, probably. <laughs> I, I promise you, I didn't forget when the day off was. I might not know when it was Northwestern, but I know when the day off is. <laughs> All right. Norm Ellenberger, our postgame guest, will be back with a final thought after the 60-second timeout. 
St. Elizabeth Healthcare Center in Delphi follows the philosophy of the Sisters of St. Francis. Each person is treated with respect. The gift of life is so valued that each person is aware of being loved. St. Elizabeth Healthcare Center gives the highest quality services, including skilled and intermediate care, hospice suites, outpatient rehabilitation, physical therapy, speech therapy, and support groups. Taking care of others. The mission of St. Elizabeth Healthcare Center, 701 Armory Road in Delphi. Hi, this is Pat Decker of Decker's Furniture in downtown Monticello, and I've got a sale for you. It's Pat's Hard Hat Sale. Now there's a new twist. Workmen will be coming in soon to make structural repairs to my building, so to help you help me clear the work site, I've drastically reduced prices on my entire inventory of name brand furniture, bedding, everything. Save up to 50% and even more. Don't miss this unique sale. Not so good for me, but great for you. Decker's Furniture and Accessories, 210 North Main, downtown Monticello. Better come soon for best selection. Well, for the final time today from Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Indiana, 86, Minnesota 75. The Gophers go to 7-8 and eight in the Big Ten, 15-9 in the season. The Hoosiers 14-1 of the conference and 25-3 and in the campaign. Top scorer today, Bashan Leonard from Minnesota. He had 24 points. Indiana had four players in double figures. Greg Graham leading the way with 19. Indiana shoots better than 50% today, 57% to be exact. They had a great 64% in the second half when they hit 10 of their first 12 shots. They held Minnesota to 44% shooting. The Hoosiers got it out for their 14th Big Ten win against just one defeat in the conference, and they still own a two-game lead over the rest of the Big Ten with just three games remaining. They're in the driver's seat for the conference championship. Don't forget tomorrow, or actually uh, Monday night for the Bob Knight Talk Show over most of these same network stations, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central Time. And then, of course, we'll be joining you for a play-by-play -play of the Indiana Northwestern matchup at the Assembly Hall next Thursday. Airtime will be at 7.40, tip at 8.05. Until then, for Max Skirvin, this is Don Fisher. So long, everybody.